So hello everyone. We are almost ready to start the fight. So my name is Roman Zinchuk. I'm a PhD student in Paris and Marseille in the biophotonics field. I will be the host for this fight and also the jury member. So let's uh, first check and present the teams which will play today with us. So the first team is Team Limitless. Are you present here? Hello, we are here. Okay, perfect. Uh, team Limitless is from Romania. Team Via Chuikova, are you here? Yes, we are here. Okay, Team Via Chuikova is from Russian Federation. And Team Reimagine, are you here? Uh, yes, we are. Perfect. Team Reimagine is from Ukraine. So uh, now I will ask the jury members to present themselves, just brief introduction. Uh, so, Dmitry Borodin, are you here? Uh, hello, everyone. Do you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, well, uh, I am Dmitry Borodin. I'm a master uh, in computer science from Bauman Moscow State Technical University, Russian Federation. Uh, now I work as a lead software engineer. Uh, and uh, previously, I was an active uh, participant uh, in uh, scientific tournaments. Uh, and now I'm glad to be here as a jury. I wish everyone good luck and have a good fight. Thank you. Uh, so for the future, uh, if there are if there is a possibility to turn on the camera, it's always better to turn. If there are no this technical, like if there are technical issues with it, then obviously do not do it. Uh, we are also happy to see you here, Dmitri. Uh, second jury is Yulia Mergorodska. Are you here? Yeah, hi. Uh, I still haven't figured out how to switch on cameras, so... So there, there, there are uh, a button which is called video, and when you click on it, it will switch it on. Okay, yeah. I mean, I look terrible. I just woke up. Um, yeah, hi, guys. <laughs> so, my name is Julia, and I'm speaking to you from uh, UK. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Bristol, working in the field of origin of light, synthetic biology, and creating artificial lives, this sort of things. So I will be looking forward to your presentations and your fights today. Mm, see ya. Thank you. Uh, just wait a second. Uh, uh, yeah, just mm -hmm. click on the same button. It will it will switch it. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Okay. The surgery member is Valeria Lukashenko. Are you here? Well, yes. Yes. Sorry, I unmuted myself. Muted myself. Couldn't unmute myself for a while. Hello, everyone. I'm Valeria Lukashenko, and. I'm talking to you from Amsterdam, Netherlands. I'm a PhD student here in the field of particle physics, uh, working in the Netherlands uh, Institute for Subatomic Physics. And my main research is connected with CERN, which is this big uh, research lab in Switzerland that hosts the Large Hadron Collider you probably heard of at some point. So I also participated in my times in this kind of tournaments. So I wish you all the best and all the luck today in your fights. Thanks. Thank you, Valeria. The next jury member is Victoria Huren. Are you here? Hello. Yes, I'm here. I'm glad to see you again. So my name is Victoria, and I'm a master's student at the Max Planck School for Molecular Biology in Göttingen, Germany. Uh, I was also a um, participant myself in the past, and now I'm a jury, and I'm um, Really glad to have this opportunity, and I'm really expecting and waiting for juicy fights and discussions, fruitful discussions, which lead somewhere. Um, yeah, good luck to everyone, and maybe, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. And the last jury participant is Vitaly Kalinowski. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, everyone. My name is Vitaly Kalinowski. I'm assistant professor at Tarasovchenko National University of Kyiv. Basically, I specialize in cell biology and related stuff. And I hope today you'll receive a lot of joy, at least, and fun. Yeah, I hope also. And I will be the last jury member. As I said, I'm a PhD student in the field of biophotonics.
but I'm a physicist, so I'm not very good in biology for now. Excuse me, I have a note. So can we make like a common screenshot and switch yeah, on? So uh, oh, I, will, I will just planning to do it now. So in order to sure. have some memory from the tournament, I will ask to for everyone who can turn on the camera to turn it on so we can make a screenshot just for the purpose of, I don't know, tournament history. Yeah, so everyone who can turn on the camera, please do it. Oh, so you are all in one place. That's perfect. We will not tell anyone about these sensor rules. Perfect. Thank you. You can switch them off. And let's start with the captain competition in order to determine the order of which you will present your solutions today. So uh, in order to, to choose this, I am asking the captains of all the teams in 15 seconds to answer me a question. And the answer will be just a single number. And the ones who will be closer in logarithmic scale, there will, they will be the winner of the competition. So I will uh, say the question, and then I will duplicate it to the text channel in order for you, if you don't hear me well or something, you can check it. And as I said, you will have only 15 seconds. If I receive answers after 15 seconds, it means that you lost, basically. So the question is uh, from our sponsor, Yenemin Company. And the question is, how many compounds are in the chemical space of Yenemin Company, so-called real space? Note that Yenemin is a Ukrainian chemical company with the largest and the most diversity screening library. Time. Okay, that, that was almost in the time. I will accept everyone. Oh my God, I got the one answer, which is enormously closed. This is the answer from Team VI Trikova. They get an answer of 15 billions, and the correct answer is 15.5 billion. So the Team VI Trikova win the Katrin competition. The team uh, re imaging say 1.3 million, so they will be second in this fight. And the team uh, limitless answered 300, which is much less compared to the real value. So team VI Trikova, in which order you want to choose uh, the role which you will be participating in this fight? In the first fight, in the first fight, we want to be the reporters. You want to be reporters? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Team re-imaging. Re-imaging, pardon. Uh, in the first fight, we want to be opponents. You want to be opponent, okay. And the team limitless, you only can be uh, the reviewer in the first fight. Okay, so now I need just one minute in order to write myself the possible tasks which can be played by the team. So team re-imaging will be an uh, opponent for the team VI Trikova. So. Okay, so I'm ready. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. So team re-imaging, you can challenge team VI Trikova with problems except problem 2, 5, 6, 10, 12. So we can choose 
any problem except I will du duplicate it to five, six, 10, 12, because 12 is the problem, uh, which is the uh, eternal rejection for team VI Chuikova. Problem number six and 10 was already reported by the team. And you as a team reimaging, you already opposed problems two and five. Okay. Uh, we challenged team VI Chuikova on the problem eight. Problem eight, which is called Colorella Undressed. Team VI Chuikova, are you accepting this problem? Uh, we would like to take a tactical rejection on that test. Tactical rejection, no problems. So, next challenging. Okay, we challenge Team Vyashikova on the problem 11. Problem 11, Spellivery. Yeah. Yes. Team Chuikova. Uh, we would like to take a tactical rejection on this task too. Okay, so I want to remember you that each subsequent tactical rejection will decrease your coefficient with 0 0.3. So, team, uh, re imagine oh. next challenge. Okay, we challenge the team via Trikova on the problem four. Problem four, universal transforming agent. A tactical rejection. Tactical rejection, your coefficient is lowering to 2.7. Next one. Uh, one second. Uh, sure. On the problem three. Problem three, nine out of ten dentists. Tactical rejection. Coefficient is lowering to 2.4. Next one. So you have only three possible problems you can challenge, which is the problem number one, seven, and nine. Uh, we've already reported task number one, so I think that technically you can't challenge us on this task. No, no, no. Did, uh, what? Sorry. Uh, yesterday we already reported on the task number one. So task number you... one? Number one, smartphone apps. Mm, yeah, that was think... our first slide. Mm, okay. Okay. I... okay. We challenge the team we actually call on the problem seven. It's one of yours. Okay, we are getting the end. Okay. Finally, finally, finally. Problem number seven, Bombard Cubes. So uh, now you have some time, which is one minute to prepare for the report. And uh, please also type everyone the names of the opponent, reporter, and the reviewer for this.
Team Limitless, I'm waiting for the name of your reviewer and also Team VIG Cover, please start the presentation. Just a couple seconds, we will turn on the presentation and we will start. Okay, so you can see and he move on. Yeah. Yes. So uh, please tell me if anyone is not able to see the presentation. Otherwise, I will accept that everyone is able. If if someone is not seeing, then tell. In the presentation. <laughs> what? Sorry. Okay, it seems that everyone is able to see the presentation. I still have like we're not able to see the presentation. Okay, then tell me when you will be able to see it. <laughs> So now it's okay or not? We still cannot see the presentation. It's constantly loading. Okay, then just tell me. And opponent team, are you able to see it? No, we are not. Okay, but it sometimes happens with Discord. I don't know why, but sometimes it can load for some people quite sometimes. I can see it now, it finally. We can see it as well. Okay, so we can start. Yes, right? your 10 minutes is starting now, please. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Olga. I'll tell you about Mumbat Cubes uh, from which you go. Okay, so cube is probably the most uncommon shape for nature created objects. Mumbat's cubes are of those few. Previously, people have had all sorts of ideas and theories why does it look the way it looks? The most popular postulate was that Mumbats make cubes so that they can stack them to, to mark their territory without the pieces rolling away. But, but by today, uh, it seems to be a misconception. There also was a speculation that Mumbats had a square-shaped anal sphincter uh, that the pieces can get squeezed between the pelvic bones. Uh, but that's also a misconception. Um, also, researchers say that cubic shape is related to the dry environment um, that, that wombats live in. Uh, they have to really squeeze every drop of the moisture out of the food and thus uh, this dryness help to form these cats uh, more rigid shape uh, and with sh sharper angles. Um, as the food digest that is digested through the um, gut, the pressure from the intestine helps to start the fish pieces, uh, meaning that the shape of the, the intestine will affect the shape of the dropping. Yeah, and the Lombard's intestine is long. Uh, it's about 10 meters, which is about 10, time, 10 times long, longer than the, its body. Um, but there are four places, uh, two that are stiffer and two that are more flexible than the rest of the intestine. Uh, that happens due to the muscle thickness. Um, and that, that is the key for formation of the cubic excrements. Uh, and that was found pretty short time ago. Um, and there can be observed, um, like, Two distinct ravine like grooves uh, where the intestine is stretcher, and this helps to shape the worm's feces into cubic scats. So, yeah, it's um, likely that this area, um, like uh, the key to the uh, solution of this problem. So, yeah, the rhythmic constructions uh, help the, to form the cor corners of the cubes. Um, yeah, and for us, um, the way these cubes are formed. Um, looks pretty attractive uh, as our solution proposed the formation of cube-like structures in area where the, piece, the precise and sharp angles are not really needed. Um, so 
it's common known, common to our solution. It's common known that the amount of trash um, is growing exponentially, and almost nothing is being done about that. And microplastics is another issue to be con concerned about. Um, thus, our solution um, proposed the usage of mbats like intestine model for the packaging of plastics into smaller areas. Uh, we propose the sorted plastics to be melted and then poured through the intestine model. Uh, as a result, we would get cube-like plastic pieces. The advantages of such approach are the following. First of all, we would need um, less place for the plastic storage. And moreover, there, is a, there would, be, would appear the motivation to sort plastics and to create the infrastructures, infrastructure for trash sorting. And also, um, there would be, there is no need to cut the solid material to form cubes, like it would be, would happen other way, so less space needed. Uh, and also, um, less microplastics micro would be formed as the overall surface of the, um, like, um, the trash is much smaller due to the form of the cube. Uh, so, um, also there is a potential, there, there could be a lot of potential ways you can use these bricks. Um, somewhere in your in our lives. For example, uh, we propose to use such bricks to form roads. Like uh, we can perform bricks made from plastics and, just, and as we know, uh, plastics don't degrade uh, for a very long time. So like it can, can spread for thousands, hundreds of years. Uh, and thus uh, probably we can do like uh, roads from bricks from plastics. Um, yeah. Which would have a pretty long shelf life. Um, and also, we feel the gaps between bricks with the mounted plastics of making it even more reliable and uh, like uh, strong. Yeah. Um, the the disadvantage of such a solution is that the um, microplastic can be still washed away from the this surface of the road, uh, but comparing to the amount of microplastics washed from trash polygons, that might be a much milder, milder pollution. So yeah, our solution proposed the usage of um, a model for trash to something needed. For example, break forward. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank uh, you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, and now it's time for one minute preparation of the opponent for the reporter opponent polemics. Okay, I'm ready for opposition. Uh, it's not opposition now. It will oh, be ten minutes. So polemics, polemics. Sorry. Yes, and they are starting now. If you can so, turn on the camera, it will be good. Please. Okay. My name is Makita. I represent Team Ray Medium, and uh, the first question to the reporter is: Can you please? Deadly describe how do bombards do their cubes because on your slides it was I was unable to see how exactly it made. Well, the, the mass itself goes through the Anderson, Anderson, uh, and there are like two places which have uh, like another stress, stress of the muscles, uh, and there. Um, some uh, angles are being formed while squeezing through these uh, more soft and more like, tight places of the industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answers. And uh, uh, the cubes that they form, are they cubical or they are some kind of curvy? How do you think? 
well, they are not absolutely cubic. Of course, they have kind of mild, 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 mild milder angles than the perfect cube, uh, but they are still cube-like. And also, it depends on the, the uh, food the animal eats and uh, on the um, the amount of water is available to this animal and also to the uh, environment itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you said that you can uh, kind of order the plastic trash uh, to the cubicle forms. And have you considered any industrial problems that it can occur? Well, of course, the biggest problem is to find uh, like um, people who would like to sort plastic. Like um, most people are not concerned about this problem. Uh, and even though there are a lot of trash bins uh, with plastic sorting, uh, there are still some additives which are not which, which are not able to be used in this process. Uh, it makes might spoil the uh, whole mass. Like ju just one inappropriate bottle can spoil like tons of uh, plastics done for the cycling or recycling. Um, but still, that scenario where some res results are being are, are, are being achieved uh, in some countries, plus I think it's a pretty uh, perspective thing. Um, well, other things. Um, uh, I would think that uh, some, something uh, like residues of the food on the plastics might might also spoil the quality. But mm -hmm. if we it's pretty high. Uh, then uh, it might be it might burn, so that there there probably be additives of like uh, carbon um, and some gases would uh, would fly out of this production, and there also will be need uh, to somehow uh, uh, use them or like not, not go, go, put letting them out in the environment. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see your point and continue the question. How do you consider to use this technology in industry? Just you cannot use your bomber to make some plastic cubes. Yes, uh, I meant that we would make uh, we can make a model of is interesting. Like it would um, we would first uh, get the old trash or trash which has already been sorted by the citizens of the place where we live. Uh, when we get the pure plastic, which is a bit, which is you know, like good for like, building roads and so on, then we melt it, uh, and then we like put it into the model of the what's in uh not the life moment, uh, and so that the these cubes are being formed. They're not perfect, uh, but that's pretty appropriate for making some roads. Like not. Mm -hmm. moving, but, Okay, I see your point again. And uh, the next question is about the plastic used. Is every plastic compatible for using in your technology? Yes, of course not. Uh, and there are pretty different types of plastics. And uh, moreover, not, as now people are more concerned about plastics, uh, a lot of biodegradable uh, opportunities are appearing. And they are, of course, and that is a big, big problem actually, because uh, biodegradable means just uh, faster but degrade, degrade, degrading into microparticles, and thus it would mean that the faster the roads would spoil after when if such microplastic such plastic would be added to the whole mass. Uh, thus, yeah, some concern and information of these citizens is absolutely needed for people to know which plastic is uh, good for recycling and which is not. Mm -hmm. And have you considered any parameters of plastic that are preferred for your technology? For example, viscosity at any temperature, because you said that you use only melted plastic to make cubes. Well, I think the the um, it also it, uh, actually depends on the country we would use this technology. Because, uh, for example, I think it's a bad idea to use such um, uh, plastic bricks in hot countries, like I don't know. Uh, America or um, Spain, because under the sun it would uh, it would um, like smell uh, and also melt, and uh, that nothing good would be done with that. Uh, and in some countries where 
Um, for example, in Russia, cars have like I don't know how wheels on the uh, wheels of the cars, and that might might also spoil the pretty the, as these bricks would be very hard. They will be like a bit soft, I think. Uh, that also might spoil the coverage of the road. Uh, thus, some um, intermediate uh, level of the climate is needed. Um, somewhere in Europe, probably it would work well. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for the answer. And the next question is about your road. You can switch your slide to the 16, please. And the question is about the parameters of the bricks. Are mm -hmm. they counted or not? Counted? What do you mean by it? Uh, I mean, have you considered any parameters of these bricks used for the road? Uh, OK, uh, well, um, as the industry model would produce like cubic-like uh, bricks. Yeah, I, I did a mistake. I, I, I draw some very long, long cubes. Yeah, that would be just cubes. So that'd probably be the roads for uh, like people, people going somewhere in parks probably because yeah, I think the quality of the road would be, would not be appropriate for cars uh, usage. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answer, but I was asking about That's have great. you can I was asking about have you counted the parameters of the bricks that are made for production these kind of roads? Um you mean the uh, like yeah, I, I see your point. Well, um <clears throat> As we can uh, like make the industry as big as possible, I think. Uh, but at some point, it won't, won't work anymore. Like the the whole mass of the cube would be too much. Thus, it would like like melt before it like got stiff enough. Um, so yeah, probably it might be related experimentally. But I think like fifteen centimeters would be enough. And how do you think? Uh, scaling your technology wouldn't affect the process of cube forming. Yeah, that, that depends on the quality of plastics because uh, if we um, form the cubes from too uh, like viscous or not uh, stiff enough uh, plastics, that would just kind of melt while standing and waiting for it, for its flower life. Um, but if we get the proper quality. Um, then the cube would be stiff enough to be used in this, uh, and yeah. Yeah, uh, I see your point. Thank you. Thank you for your okay, now you have two minutes to prepare for the. I think I'm ready for opposition right now. Okay, dear reporter, are you here? Can you hear us? Mm -hmm. 
hear the portal? Yes, we can hear everything. Okay, perfect. Then you have your five minutes for the opposition. Okay, so firstly, I thank Reporter for such a great presentation. There were a lot of pictures, uh, and I think it was kind of bland from the point of theory used in this material. So I think you could make a lot of theoretical review uh, regarding all, all the problems of formation cubes by Wombats. And the next point about my about the presentation of the presenter is a not clear uh, picture of the technology use because we hadn't got any technology proposed in this presentation, but that task was about this technology, which is kind of a pity right now. Uh, so the next point is about references. We don't know what the references used in this work because I haven't got a, a, a complete list of the references for this work. And uh, the concept of the route uh, was not overworked because the parameters of cubes is not considered as well as parameters of the plastic used for the technology is not considered. So, so. The problem the scale and experimental of the Okay, now reporter has two minutes to answer for the opposition. Okay, well, first of all, I would like to thank for the opposition. Uh, well, talking about uh, wings, first of all, well, I add a link because um, probably this like evaluation of the mechanism of cubes being formed is pretty, was done pretty short time ago. Plus, there are not too many links. That like the one major one is has been on the slide, and the idea is, is itself is not not taken from anywhere. I hope. Uh, thus, yeah, ju just the idea. Um, no need for extra um, references. Yeah. Um, also, you mentioned that um, probably the the scale scaling might spoil everything. Well, probably, uh, but that can be like evaluated before experiments. Uh, and also, we, we can just use uh, the parameters as they is in nature, just making smaller bricks. And yeah, well, I, I think other is question. Other questions will, will discuss later in climax. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time for, for preparation of the review I see. Excuse me, I didn't hear you. I see the presentation. Yeah, tell me when you will load it for you. 
So, dear opponent and, re and reporter? No, still not. Still not. Okay. Well, I'm going to try again. That's... No, 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 don't, don't do it. it oh, not... yeah. Now I can see. Okay. Yeah, we can't see. Uh, reporter, is it okay for you? Uh, yes, everything is all right. We can see. Okay, it. then, uh, dear reviewer, you have four minutes for reviewing, please. Okay, so hello everyone, my name is Nicola Omara and today I'm going to be reviewing problem number seven. Uh, one moment, because it's not... Okay, uh, so for the reporter summary, some pros and advantages. Uh, visual aids helped us understand the problem at hand. It was really helpful to see uh, the intestine and where the cubes were formed. Uh, a relatively good theoretical model was shown. Uh, I also like the hypothesis uh, that was presented with the anus and pelvic bones uh, that were not, uh, that were explained that they were not right and it was actually uh, due to the uh, intestine. However, no climate, we believe no climate or some other approach was was which was really helpful because it, uh, it helped us gain uh, a little bit of, of a deeper understanding of the um, of the proposed approach by the about by the reporter and uh, how he thought that the climate the last which we believe is a pretty important the very very message um we that is more the critical of that for the story uh, we the been a very point too. So uh, he brought into question the efficiency of the approach, as I said earlier. Uh, uh, and most important to bring up uh, is that uh, the reporter should should look in the gases released when plastic is melted, because again, as I said, uh, a lot of pollution is involved in this process. Uh, we also recommend uh, to look into a bit more deeper into the formation of cubes because that might have helped uh, bringing or proposing a more detailed approach uh, with the technical and industrial part of this. And we uh, also uh, we uh, expected and we suggest uh, if there could be uh, some sort of comparison be between uh, uh, the proposed approach and some existing method of uh, plastic recycling. And for the, so was an example uh, molding that I would like to discuss later in the polling. Thank you. Now we have 10 minutes for the reporter, opponent, reviewer polemics, please. Okay, so uh, first of all, I have a question for the reporter. Uh, you talked about the advantages uh, of, your, uh, of your approach. Uh, could you please uh, tell me a little bit more about uh, the disadvantages of this? What might be, which might be the limitations for, uh, for what you propose? Quick 
reporter, you are muted. Is everything all right now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, you've mentioned the pollution with uh, plastics, uh, but well, for for me, as I've, as I've said, uh, that would be not a big problem comparing to trash polygons so that are not presented everywhere around the world, so that we would even uh, allow the, the the amount of plastics being released. Um, another another problem is yeah the the amount uh, the scalability of this process but actually um the road for like pedestrian road can be done for from the cubes of whatever like size of the cubes uh so the problem won't be there probably will no need to scale that too much uh so that the physical aspect would be pretty same as uh Probably these um, cubes want one kind of melt before they get teeth enough. Um, yeah, amongst other um, advantages. Um, okay, probably, so. Oh, go on, go on. Sorry. We, can, we also can't use that. For, it's not a good idea to use that for um, the roads for cars, as, yeah, the, the needles on the. Uh, Wheels would spoil it, and also the high temperature uh, due to the uh, like tension between road and the, the wheels would uh, also affect the quality of the road. And also, the thing that um, uh, climate, as I said, also may affect a lot on on the on the road because um, yeah, to to do cold weather and to hot weather, I think not the best idea to place these roads. Okay, so for example, uh, I would consider this maybe a disadvantage, but uh, I'd like to hear your opinion on that. So for example, if we're using some clinical waste, don't you think that uh, that might uh, be a sort of disadvantage? Like the sort of plastic that you use, it can be uh, from clinical waste. That would bring some some I don't know. For example, now we're we're we find ourselves in a pandemic. Uh, could that bring some viruses in your uh, uh, in your cube uh, formatting? Well, uh, first of all, clinical procedures might be um, recycled the proper way, and they are not being released into trash polygons amongst the other trash. Uh, it has absolutely other like life after death uh, and. Um, when we recycle these plastics, we first destroy it, uh, and it's being washed, and then uh, it is being melted. So it's like being heated to up to 150 degrees or even higher, uh, and thus all the viruses and living creatures are being uh, like are, they, they die, uh, and thus uh, like viruses at least won't live there, um, and also. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty, like, no residues would be left there, like, all organic stuff, like, uh, food residues and, like, bacteria, viruses will will not survive under these conditions, I suppose. Okay, yeah. so, uh, except for the part where uh, you heat everything and uh, that goes away, uh, you you are still uh, telling us that there, uh, there will be some pre-processes uh, before you, uh, you put the plastic in your machine so there will be some things that are pre-done for well uh it very depends on the resources available in the country now for example uh if the trash sorting is already organized uh and people are kind of learning to um they, they just know which plastic is available for recycling upcycling which is not uh when they get already wash plastic because people usually wash the plastics they throw there uh, and then we just need to melt it. Uh, if we're in the country where no such culture is uh, like common for people, uh, then we need firstly, we would probably need firstly to um, like make small pieces fr from this um, plastics and then kind of wash it probably and, and then melt it so that 
the okay. She just would be released. No, oh, I disagree with that because I think the plastic needs some more preparational things. All the plastic. Okay, Op opponent. I would. I would like to. I would like to ask you, what do you think that disadvantages might be for for this method? What do you think? Uh... Um, I think the disadvantage uh, disadvantages of this method may include some issues on cubic forming because you, as you may have heard, the cubes are not slightly cubical because it's a technology not connected to some precise forms. So it's the first problem. The second problem is about uh, melting the plastic because every plastic has different visco viscosity. viscosity. Yes, at different temperatures and no temperatures are considered to be counted you know, regarding this method. So it can be a problem to recycle a different plastics, I think. And uh, the technology for the road is completely uncovered in this presentation. So I can say anything about it. Well, I would say that um, 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 the plastic, um, well, when we get the cubes, we need we don't need to, uh, like perfect cubes for the pedestrian roads as uh, after putting the uh, these cubes uh, into the road, we fill the gaps uh, with the just melted plastic. And moreover, this process itself kind of we get like we can also uh, and yeah okay that's that's the bad that. And also when talking about uh, matching points, uh, like the whole uh, temperature of the um, melting temperature of the mass would depend on the plastic type. Of course, uh, but if the trash is sorting properly, uh, then very closely, uh, like similar plastics are being uh, collected in separate actions. Um, and thus, we can get almost pure one type of plastics or like two free, which would not be too hard to work with. Mm -hmm. But although I think that. Plastic cannot cover all the impurities of your plastic, just like it cannot form straight pavement. How you consider? Can I please repeat once again? You just mentioned two, two, two times plastics. I didn't get the idea. I think that uh, the plastic cannot form some straight road. Straight road. What do you think of it? Um, well, mm, if we get these cubes, like uh, we put them in form of a road and then we fill the gaps with the just melted plastic nut cubes to make it more like safer, reliable and smooth. And then we probably get the road. If, if that's but, but what if, uh, for example, do you think your plastic will be durable enough? What about weather conditions? What if it's too hot? Yeah, I mentioned that all the time that uh, yeah, it's not available in too hot countries because it would uh, cause some smelling from plastics and uh, like just melting, uh, and in too um, like um, cold weather, probably it's also not the best idea. So as, as I've said, that like mild climate of Europe probably would be the best place to use that. Mm -hmm. And what about ecological thing? Is uh, haven't you considered about that you have to return back the carbon used in the plastic to ecosystems, and would it in Ensure this ecosystem if the plastic is used in this way. Well, as we know, uh, the humanity uses a lot of plastic, and the amount of plastic being recycled is that small that, uh, like, almost nothing compared to the plastic being used. And all of that is lying on the polygons, and like, only the source of impurities and smell and like problems with ecology. Um, and I propose the solution for that problem, like a partial solution, to use these plastics to do roads. And these roads, like as they are cubic ones, uh, the amount of microplastics washed away from the surface of these cubes would be much smaller than the amount of plastics, microplastics being washed from the polygons, as they are, the surface is much higher. And thus, uh, the amount of microplastics washed away is much higher. And thus, the ecology is being uh, purif or not purified by it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I need to stop you. The suicide polemics has just passed. 
Before we will continue with the closing remarks by the reporter, I would like to ask the juries if you will have some questions for the participants, just type plus in the text channel. So I will be able to give you words in the correct order. Okay, and uh, now the reporter, you have one minute for closing remarks, please. So, so now it's time for my closing remarks. Yeah? Yes, one minute. No? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, thank you both reporter and uh, both opposer and reviewer for their uh, conversation and some remarks about uh, like uh, details might be better in my solution. Uh, well, I think uh, one more thing I haven't said that um, the my solution also uh, like gives the ability not to use extra oil to use less oil for uh, the. Road, road formation as we would uh, upcycle the things already being used by people and being like thrown away to the polygons uh, to create something new like roads. Uh, thus, the carbon issue is even like it, 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 it's even getting better uh, with this. Um, yeah, I think we've discussed a lot of things. Uh, it was pretty to talk. Thank you for your questions. Yeah. Thank you. And now it's time to, for the questions from the jury. And the first question from Vitaly Kowanowski, please. Okay, my question will be to the reporter. Uh, the problem is a task was not about just invention, but also about comparison. You should have compared your method with already exist, existing technologies. For example, there are technologies to produce roads from plastic. There are technologies to process plastic in many ways. And for example, if you melt your plastic, it would be easier just to fill some pre-existing form to give you plastic any shape. Why do we need to use your Wombat simulator for this plastic? Uh, well, uh, talking about uh, already existing methods for roads, for like creating roads. Well, for that, we need to kind of um, use oil, as I've said, uh, and that's uh, caused a lot of pollution to the nature. Uh, and thus, uh, I propose just use what's available at, and what's lying on the polygons for years, uh, like useless and spoiling the nature. Uh, Excuse me, but there is a road from plastic has had already been made from plastic, recycled plastic. Uh, okay. Um, well, uh, I think the roads uh, the, have been made from plastics. Uh, okay, the idea of uh, the reviewer, I think, uh, or already also as well not molding it, but uh, using the moment model. Well, um, yeah, the, the, the task was to uh, invent the, like, the way we can use this moment model. Um, I say that this is uh, like a more continuous process that can be done easily than molding in something like you just need not to in molten you just also melt the plastics and then like into forms uh fill the forms and then kind of pull it down this way you just don't don't need forms at, at all so the cubes are being formed while melting and going through the your like, your wombat simulator has some specific form and shapes and so on and it's continuous it's longer it's uh, has it needs more resources to process well I've I, seen I, all... I don't think so Reason. Uh, I'm sorry, but yep. not really time for the comments. The comments will be afterwards. You can comment afterwards, but now it's really time to questions. Um, we don't need the whole cruise of the, like, the intestine of the woman, but when we produce such uh, such cubes, we just need the, this exact place where the yeah, yeah the, the, well, where, where the grooves are. Uh, so it won't take that long time. Uh, and the forms uh, which you feel while molding the plastics, I kind of kind of need to be like, uh, they take a lot of place uh, for storage, for cooling down and so on. So I think, yeah, of course, that's not a perfect uh, solution to be used, but that's an idea that can be uh, like, try it. Okay. Well, the next question. Yeah is from Victoria Okay, I have uh, one question to each of you guys. Please keep it very, very short. First, my question to the uh, reporter. So you mentioned this uh, huge problem of microplastic, but then according to actually your own presentation, 
solution, uh, your solution will cause even more of a, of a like microplastic washing out from this road. So how can you explain it? And uh, are there ways? Is there a way to kind of avoid this uh, problem? Sure. Yes. Yeah, my idea was that uh, on the on the contrary, my solution would uh, make the amount of microplastic much lower because on the polygon stretches like has a lot of surface because bottles like have very large surface and then you press it into cubes and the surface of the cubes is like close to very small and okay, that's I got uh, the okay. yeah. then i have a question to the opponent uh please briefly and shortly uh maybe in some key points how do you see their uh presented solution be improved i think firstly it may be used in some production of plastic as it said, and it should be considered uh, different parts of the plastic like different parameters and specifying like the parameters of the plastic that is more viable for using in the roads. I Thank think you. so. Uh, reviewer, I want to add uh, to opponent, how can we improve the existing solution right now? Yeah, I believe that uh, the mechanism could have been but my question is not about presentation itself but about method so we are melting and making cubes maybe some other steps which we should add to that uh, for example i believe that there there is going to be a lot of energy involved in this so maybe something some solar powered energy or something like that could be okay. brought to this thanks okay the next question is from valeria lukashenko Thank you for the five that I just have seen. First of all, to both uh, report uh, opponent and reviewer. And I had a question uh, for the reporter. So you kind of touched uh, this story about different kinds of plastics during polemics. And it's kind of true that some types of plastics also can be recycled way easier, let's say, than other types of plastics. So I would assume that. It's my assumption right now, let's say, that your road would be made out of the plastic that probably is not the one that we can easily recycle already now and reuse it again, but some that is, you know, just there and is uh, very bad for normal types of recycling, so we just want to melt it and store it somewhere. And then my next question would be, then, if you melt it and store it in some place like this brick, at some point, maybe, you know, in 20 or 30 years, you would want to still do something with this plastic and reuse it again. Do you think that would be possible with your technology? Like in terms of like plastics you planning to use and stuff, would it be possible to still in 20 years, this like basically take them out of the ground and, you know, do something else with them in order to reduce the waste again or repurpose them in some way? Well, I think that, uh, yeah, while being used in the ground, like people go uh, using these roads, the plastic is, will be exposed. So yeah, in a couple of years, the excuse might be like refreshed. Uh, and uh, thus, yeah, there is a problem that uh, the ones we used might be like, might go somewhere else. Uh, first of all, they at least will take uh, like a smaller place than the plastics in the origin. Uh, and the second point is that uh, from Probably, I'm not sure how would this uh, whole system like, um, behave, behave in like ten, ten, thousands, dozens, dozens of years, but uh, probably we can just remelt it again uh, so that the spoiled organics would again like become carbon or like fly, fly away, uh, uh, and the uh, still available and good stuff would be just formed, will just be used the same way once again, probably. Yeah, I'm not really sure you can melt it infinite amount of time, but I think you can think about this a bit later yeah, after. Time for not no, it's just. And yeah. the last question, hopefully not that long, from Yulia Margot. Yeah, just a quick question to reiterate: What are actual advantages of a square shape, and where do you think? Well, let's just dive out of the road things. Where you think just 
having squares or rectangles has a practical advantage. And I'm talking not about my macro scale, like centimeters, but also on a micro scale level. What do you think of what, what the potential advantages are? Well, can you please explain other words, the question, like, how, how can I use this? Can I use this? Uh, yeah, uh, so obviously different shapes have different um, advantages for a certain purpose, like uh, what could be advantages of squares over, let's say, uh, rectangles over, um, well, you mentioned surface, um, but uh, what are in general advantages of using this uh, square shape? Uh, in a macroscopic world and in microscopic world when it's uh, lower than, let's say, a micro. Uh, does something change there? Um, well, uh, this technology probably won't be used in micro level because the angles themselves are not perfect. Thus, uh, this is like just cube-like structure, not the perfect cubes. Um, but the, the, like the, the good part of these the advantage of these cubes themselves uh, is that they can be more tightly um, packed to form the roller, for example, and uh, the surface is smaller uh, than the like other like irregular shaped things. Yeah, so those are two advantages that are being used in my solution, I think. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your answers. And now we are going to the scoring of this event. So I'm asking all the juries to send me in private messages the scores separately for the reporter, opponent, and reviewer. Okay, to announce the points for this uh, round. So the points for the reporter, four, four, three, three, four, four. Pretty close. The points for the opponent, seven, six, six, seven, six, seven. And the points for the reviewer, eight, eight, Six, ten, eight, eight, eight. So, if there are any jurors who wants to comment on this section, now it's time for this, please. I would like just maybe a small note that basically the task that was chosen had not been solved. All the process that we have mentioned. It was just about the thing itself without any. We compare it with any chemical um, it just, I don't know, it's just like it some pro in the production without any justification, without some economical I scientific base. Yeah, I would like That's also to, this to point, point, that uh, point that we didn't really see a solution because first the task uh, was not completely solved itself. We didn't see proper per scheme and explanation of your method. Uh, you talked a lot about um, nature, problem, plastic, but not really about your solution. You didn't compare it as it was written in the task. 
So that's why so low points to a reporter. And I also would say that for um, opponent and uh, reviewer, your questions were very smart and you also like, uh, it led to a lot of explanations and justifications from the uh, reporter. And maybe you should have also spoken a little bit more um, and just given like so much of time to answer your questions. But also the problem was that it was just, you know, like uh, the game of question and answer. Uh, and you, so why I asked you, like, how is it possible to improve existing solution? Uh, you should have also mentioned it um, during your polemics because your questions were, were really smart and you pointed out very important, like, um, uh, key problems and maybe some good sides of this uh, solution. But it would be nice for you during your polemics to then like discuss it, okay, we have this problem, what could be the solution? Yeah, so please keep it in mind maybe for next round. Yeah, and just in general, I mean, it's nice to have um, uh, like jokes and uh, memes and uh, good pictures in a presentation, but we really are looking more for the solution. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no more comments, we are going straight forward to start the second round. Between second and third, we will make a small, small five minutes break. So in this round, uh, da, 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 da. Team Limitless will be the opponent, and Team Ray Imaging will be the reporter. So the problems which cannot be challenged is the problem number three, four, seven, and twelve. All the others can be chosen. I okay, we need a moment. Uh, sorry, sorry. Well, why we can't have first problem? Because we haven't reported it and we have not uh, sure, like, rejected. Team Limitless has already opposed this problem. Ah, okay, I see your points. Try to read the rules, always. So team limitless, which problem you are challenging the team re-imaging? We propose problem number five, two, two. Problem number five, two, two, team re-imaging. Uh, we accept this challenge. Okay. Okay. So the pro the it will be played the problem number five. Now it's the time for the preparation for the reporter. And also I'm asking to type the names of who will be the reporter, opponent, and the reviewer. So I'm ready to start. Can I? Uh, unfortunately, I don't see your presentation. Uh, yeah, 
I'm just about to load it. Yes. Uh, okay, so please, everyone, if you are able, if you are not able to see the presentation. Other, other people who are not able to see the presentation or not. So I'm waiting a few seconds if someone is telling me that they are not able. Excuse me, I can't see the presentation, but can you please press a screen button? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, so now, dear reporter, you have 10 minutes for your report, and they are starting right now, please. Thanks. Uh, so my name is Lumila Rajula. I'm from the team Rain Asian, and here's our solution for the task show too. Um, uh, the objective was to suggest a synthetic grain-based fuel and a method of its production. We also had to decide on what should be the principle of the engine to use this fuel. So considering the task, we've done some research, and um, today any talk on fuels to touch on environmental issues as fossil fuels contribute to global warming significantly. To mitigate the harmful effects of climate change, we can use uh, renewable energy sources to replace fossil fuels. Uh, biofuels are fuels that can be produced year after year through sustainable farming practices, as they might be a part of this solution. Uh, based on biomass resources, biofuels are divided into different generations. Uh, the first generation is uh, the one whose source is uh, sugar, fat, or starch extracted directly from plants uh, that are competitive or able to compete with food crops. Uh, the second generation biofuels are derived from cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin, or pectin, for example, agricultural and forestry waste products or plant material. Uh, third generation biofuels are derived from algae. Uh, the first generation biofuels uh, are understood as synthetic fuels fuels produced by um, the conversion of different types of biomass, such as gasification, pyrolysis, fissure drop synthesis, uh, and this fuel is used without changing the engine and infrastructure, so it's called co drop-in fuel. Uh, compared to traditional biofuels, these are more effective at reducing CO2 emissions uh, about 60 to 90 percent. Um, so after the screening of possible options, we have chosen uh, biobutanol for our fuel. It's a forest generation biofuel. Um, biobutanol is considered in the last years as a permanent alternative fuel, both for gasoline and for diesel applications. Biobutanol uh, is adapted to various IC engines, such as compression ignition, spark ignition, gasoline direct injection, water engines, and uh, way more. Uh, compared with other alcohols, uh, which are fuel substitutes, namely ethanol, butanol has unique advantages. Experiments have shown that uh, the energy density of biobutanol is uh, similar to that of gasoline and uh, much higher than that of ethanol. Second, compared to other alcohol fuels, butanol has low vapor pressure and greater hydrophobicity, so it can be stored in humid conditions and is more suitable for use in existing gasoline supply and distribution systems. Butanol is non-corrosive and uh, is more similar similar in air to fuel ratio to gasoline and ethanol. Thus, it can be used in existing combustion engines and mixture with gasoline of up to 30% by volume. And the octane number of butanol is in line with that of gasoline, and it can be increased with additives uh, more. Um, <laughs> Currently, most of the butanol commercially produced is synthesized through chemical process of oxosynthesis, um, which is relatively low in price and high in yields, but it needs fossil fuels based starting material, propylene. Uh, a promising alternative is based on a fermentation by bacteria Clostridium. Uh, it can use various biomass sources, uh, plant and food processing waste, which may be used in waste disposal. Unfortunately, the road produces a mixture of acetone, butanol, and ethanol, and that's why it's called ABE fermentation. Uh, but solar recovery using conventional distillation is energy intensive and relatively expensive. ABE is also limited by the high cost of the fermentation substrates, uh, process inhibition by butanol, and by the low concentrations of butanol in the product, as well as by the high downstream processing costs. Um, novel chemical approach features bioethanol. It is per se carotenaldehyde hydrogenation. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, here's a scheme of the synthesis proposed. Um, and although starting material can be produced in abundant quantities from sustainable sources, slow conversion and selectivity of the process make it incompatible with the prices of the fuel market. Uh, nonetheless, uh, these pathways can be further developed so to be economically feasible in the future. Uh, by now, we suggest that the most efficient way to produce butanol from biomass is to modify the existing commercial technique. Propylene for the oxys process can be obtained from methanol, which is in turn is made from thin gas. Biomass gasification can provide uh, thin gas quite sufficiently. And uh, here you can see a scheme of what I just said. Um, and the first stage, uh, biomass is converted to thin gas, uh, a mixture of carbon monoxide, hydrogen, CO2, and water. Uh, it happens in a process known as uh, gasification or partial oxidation. It's done at uh, 2000 uh, uh, degrees Celsius in presence of oxygen, steam, and air. Uh, next, uh, the zinc gas is converted to methanol at high temperature and pressure on catalysts such as copper, zinc oxide, alumina, and magnesia. Then, methanol is turned into propylene uh, and um, it's a special case of the MTO, methanol to olefins process, and uh, the elite catalyst uh, SAPO34 provides 80% selectivity to propylene and ethylene. Uh, the propylene obtained uh, undergoes hydroformylation with the use of rhodium catalyst and complex with uh, triphenophosphine ligand CPPTS. Um, then the produced butyraldehyde is then reduced to butanol by hydrogen in the presence of palladium and carbon. And uh, that's all the process. Uh, the proposed process uh, can eliminate the main drawback of the oxysynthesis, the unsustainable source of propylene. And like method presented before, it exhibits a quite high conversion of biomass to butanol with distance selectivity. And um, um, but it has some drawbacks, uh, some problems may arise, um, such as hydrogen deficiency of biomass derived syngas, which means that it may have to be enriched with hydrogen. Uh, and the cost of the final product is still higher than that of fossil fuels, which makes it less appealing. Um, as it was said, uh, butanol has a slightly sm smaller octane number than gasoline, and to increase uh, octane number, ferrocene might be added, as it is highly efficient and it does not change the volume of the resulting fuel. Um, the improvement of octane number can positively impact engine performance and durability. So uh, it's time for the conclusion suggested by butanol as a fuel derived from renewable sources and review the advantages of its use. Uh, Biobutanol may be used as an individual fuel with various types of uh, inner con combustion engines with adjustments of air to fuel ratio and as a dropping fuel without any modification. Um, uh, the proposed method of production was merely introduced by a must derived properly into conventional oxy process uh, and we also pointed out the drawbacks of such a decision. Um, here you can see uh, all the literature that was used uh, to prepare a solution. Thanks for your attention. I'm done with my presentation. Thank you. Now it's one minute for preparation for the reporter opponent polemics. Hello, can you hear me? Can you see me? So, we can start the discussion. Okay, first of all, I would have to congratulate you. I really liked the uh, schematics that was really uh, interesting of the problem. Is there? I have some few questions though. How is the uh, the normal? I was told something about uh, its uh, physical properties, which make it a difference. Uh, it will uh, burn more density, so it can release more energy while being burned. And uh, uh, 
it's closer in ratios than gasoline, so it can be uh, mixed in higher ratios with gasoline. That as reducing um, so the approach is uh, that you still need to use it uh, in a mix with normal gas, no, just you like can ethanol, use, right? Uh, you, you can use it as a uh, single substance in fuel, but also you can use it uh, in a mixture with gasoline. And air to fuel ratio is uh, also important uh, in the question of uh, the construction of uh, the engine, because uh, when you use the butanol itself, uh, the air to fuel ratio has to be adjusted less than to uh, use. Uh, yes, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Uh, that's uh, something I have to ask, though. Because for ethanol, for example, as I mentioned, it's actually used in race cars, but pure ethanol can not actually be used in engines, otherwise the engine will stall, as far as I know. Is it the same for uh, fireable? Repeat, please? Because as far as can I know... Can you repeat your point, please? Uh, uh, can I repeat my point? Okay. So what I mean is that normal ethanol uh, can't actually be used in pure form in a normal car. Because we're in a stall and can't actually properly, but it still needs to be used in a mix with uh, diesel or other uh, hydrocarbon engines. No. Uh, uh, hydrocarbon uh, fuels. And why do you think that is what makes it different from ethanol? Is it something about the burn reactions? No. Uh, I can say that it's uh, definitely less corrosive than ethanol, so it won't uh, hurt the engine that much. And, and in this table, uh, where where is the octane number exactly? Is it R O N? Uh, yeah, that's research it? octane number. Okay, octane number. And uh, what do you think uh, is the actual uh, importance of the octane link number in uh, real life um, use? Because octane link number is something uh, very important to normal fuels. As you may know, most uh, cars uh, can function with uh, really high octane link numbers. Actually, no car can function with really high octane link numbers because otherwise uh, the engine will just explode. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and true. a real octane number can actually yield to uh, a lot more emissions, as far as my knowledge concerns. But well, what do you think about the octane number of butanol? And um, what would it be mixed with? To, because pure butanol has, in my opinion, really uh, high no. octane number. I think it Pure be... butanol has uh, an octane number of about 96. Uh how it's stated in the table uh, and um, it can be um, increased more with uh, the use of additives uh, such as uh, ferrocene as i've said uh, uh, or maybe uh, um, yeah that's, that's not uh, the, exactly what I mean. uh, the, because i'm not saying how you can increase it because in my opinion uh, you uh, mean it's too in high? most car engines uh, yes, because normally uh, in normal fuels, uh, the octanic number goes up to 100 because the octanic number is actually the ratio be between isooctane and heptane uh, okay, molecules yeah, in the fuel. And octanic number means 100% isooctane, which is considered as uh, the most uh, energy, uh, the most energy efficient burn reaction. So, in my opinion, 96 for a lot of cars, for a lot of well, cars um, would actually pay, and how would you diminish that? Because uh, buying a new car would actually increase the carbon emissions way over uh, normal methods, and it, it wouldn't actually compensate for a biofuel base. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you see what I mean? Um, maybe it can be mixed with uh, some hydrocarbons with uh, long chains, so uh, the overall octane number will be lower. But I, I don't thinking. really think that uh, the, that such 
octane number uh, as butanol has may damage the engine. For most cars, it's actually really high. Uh, a lot of yes, cars, yes, at least yes. here in Romania, still function on using 80 octane numbers. So it should be diminished by a little bit. With normal, bio, with normal diesel fuels, it's much easier because you actually get the lower octane numbers when you extract them and have to be enriched. So you can just skip the enrichment process. But with butanol, I think you actually get a very uh, burnable solution, to uh, lack of a better word. Uh, yeah, moving from this point, I have to ask about uh, the engine approach. Uh, so the amount of air which yeah, I think uh, we've been talking to explain a little bit in the presentation. I don't make your point to drop them in a schematics. Uh, uh, anyone? No. Uh, all reactions. Uh, did you approximate the yield of, of, of transformation, uh, the yield of the reactions, the total yield? From how much biomass you get, how much fuel, and do you feel quantity is justifiable? Do you make a comparison between the methods to see which produces more, which one is more expensive, or things like that? Um, it's really unfortunate. I wasn't able to find the exact yields of each stage of uh, this uh, uh, industrial methods because uh, uh, they are unfortunate. For a long time, and on a big scale, and research nowadays. Uh, but uh, I can uh, say for sure that for uh, this synthesis, uh, the yields are quite low, uh, with a selectivity of eighty percent, and uh, the overall um, yield of twenty percent uh, from the uh, starting ethanol, and uh, with it's a caffeine uh, 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 extending reaction. Those usually have pretty low yield because you can't actually control where the carbon goes or what it reacts with. That's why, why I was asking that as well. And you are right, the yield direction will be lower than most. Uh, can you... Uh, get to the proposal two? Okay. Uh, proposal. Right. So, the first step of biomass turning into uh, synthesis gas monoxide. Uh, what exactly is that process? What do you mean by uh, those conditions? Uh, how would you uh, um, keep Because from what I can tell, it's a burning reaction. Do you think to use uh, those uh, the SBD? Hydrated before it's burned, otherwise, the burn reaction may be uh, um, dehydrated before the reaction, and then uh, I think uh, a stream of uh, the gases uh, has to be. Um, let's uh, through. Uh, thus, uh, the gases that will form will uh, uh no more yeah, so uh, I would have. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, I can. think I can I'll start preparing for my opposition. Thank you for the conversation, it was really helpful. Yes, yes, going.
Okay, so please announce me when you can all see my presentation. Now, at least, so maybe there are also other people who don't see it. But we can wait. Do you see that's loading or not? I loading. see that it's loading in cubic form. Yes, exactly. In the, exactly in terms of bombots. <laughs> see, we have to wait a little. To load them, yeah. there's no way around. Sometimes they have to push. Yes, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, now start to, re to reconnect this screen chain because otherwise it will take like the same time. Yeah, yeah, I'm loading, not reconnecting it. Did, no. Yeah, me too. So, other people who, do, who are not able to see it. Seems not. Can okay, you have five minutes for your position, please? Okay, as you have probably seen me before, I am Shlan Alexander from Team in Romania, and I will make a short presentation summary of my position for problem number five. So, first of all, I would like to congratulate the reporter. They had a very good approach for the problem. I loved that they had multiple reactions described and are. Excuse me, you are muted. I muted myself for a while. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, as an overall summary, the reporter had a the very good understanding of the problem, the current is the not just and the prisoners to actually have been in contact with the, the organization is still very good. First, the video on problem and such and really wish the static fractions really anything that get an overall estimate but, but i think they could have still tried to estimate it a little bit or at least mention the yield of the reactions that they uh did know uh they also didn't uh describe the preparation process of the bamas in detail in our opinion as for the proposed approach, they explained in detail the process of producing the biofuel, the chemical reactions. They took into account the fact that their method still has weak points, which is very remarkable for the reporter, and there is always room to grow. And multiple approaches were taken into account. Uh, a negative characteristic is that it is mainly just a review of current methods of preparation for bioethanol. And the fact that the inter between an actual engine and there was an as a pure alcohol usually can cannot be used in real life cases due to it, its very high number. We'll actually mention some even that of a race. The uh, of the reactions are uh, asked much reporter to be quite low the Ones that they deserved, and I think as a side note, I think uh, the reporter did a very good job, even though my presentation uh, showed a lot of negative points. I mean those as constructive criticism, and I believe that uh, the reporter uh, made a problem that has a lot of potential, and they really researched uh, their solution. Also, in our opinion, uh, the biophenol case can really be in real life if the solution can be polished in the future. And this is all I had to say. Thank you. This is my opposition. Thank you. And team Regin just wrote me that they are taking one minute timeout. So it's now one minute of timeout for them. Uh Excuse me, can I ask the reporter to turn on the presentation to maybe clarify some aspects or just see it? Yes, you can. If the reporter hears us and if he's 
can do it, please. So your one minute of timeout has just finished and uh, you have the reporter, you have two minutes for the response for the opposition, please. Okay, I'd like to say thank you to the opponent for um, um, Pointing out on the weak points of my this my solution, um, was I'm not uh, the point I can't agree about is the low yield of uh, all the reactions, uh, all the methods and uh, approaches that I've uh, talked about. Um, because uh, the exact numbers uh, which I could uh, tell were only about one of them. And uh, the second and third, I haven't said anything. So uh, you can't say that it's proven to be low because there are no actual numbers. Um, and for the preparation of biomass, I don't think that it's uh, that important for this uh, particular solution because um, actually the synthesis of uh, butanol starts uh, on the propylene stage and everything before that uh, is um, Something of a different um, build. That's uh, all for me. Thank you. Now it's time, which is one minute for the preparation of the reviewer, please. And uh, for the reporter, do not turn on the presentation because the reviewer wants to see it. So, dear reviewer, your time for the preparation has just finished. So now you have four minutes for, for the review, please. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Yes. Okay, right. So the reporter from the we mentioned uh, open, uh, the, talking about the presentation. We've seen uh, uh, a nice presentation with uh, many schemes. However, I think there has been a lot of text, but that uh, led to a better understanding. So I think that's appropriate. Uh, the solution was to basically use uh, butanol as a biofuel uh, for an engines. Uh, there has been listed some types of engines. However, uh, reporter didn't uh, get into details on that but i think that's okay because uh, uh, the main point of this presentation as i understood was uh, on a new type of production of butanol uh, using a fisher uh, process 
uh, of uh, um, basically burning biomass and then turning it into a botanol. Uh, however, I see that there is uh, some uh, things that needs to be clarified because, uh, first of all, this this process is widely known. And so what's the novelty of using bosonol this of producing bosonol this way? And secondly, there has been some schemes on the Kenitsara reactions. And I've seen their titanium isopropylate free which, uh, as I know, doesn't exist because it's a Canitsara reaction and Canitsara reaction uses titanium isopropylate 4. Uh, so that's interesting. Also in this presentation, we saw different classifications of uh, biofuels and saying that uh, the fourth generation and basically the best using fischotrops uh, process uh, for the production of uh, basically biofuels. So this again leads to the question of uh, if this uh, fourth generation is known, then what's the novelty? Um, uh, so, yes, I guess that's uh, the main thing about the reporter. Also, no details were addressed on the biomass. I've heard some words about Clostridia. I didn't really understood what it was connected with, because if the biomass is from Clostridia, then uh, it can be hard uh, to use uh, on the manufacturer level. And uh, talking about the polemics, I think it was uh, pretty productive because it was uh, clarifying mainly the points that were not really clear from the presentation, like uh, difference between like why did you choose just biobutanol instead of bioethanol? And how this question, I think, needs to be addressed again because there's not just bioethanol. There are a big variety of uh, alcohols from methanol to, I don't know, octanol and de decanol were used and were tried on different engines. So why bosanol is a, a major question. And the next uh, also octanic uh, number were taken into account. Um, and uh, possible modifications of car engine because uh, the octanic number of uh, butanol, as the opponent said, is uh, too high uh, to use uh, butanol in the normal engines. However, I think that uh, it is not even the main concern. Not just its octanic number, but also its uh, basically poor lubricity and uh, uh, poor, poor caloric values. It's known for low alcohol, but not considered a low alcohol that uh, the lubricity of it and its density and of course its the caloric values doesn't last it as a okay. fuel right now. That's and the main thing. To stop you. Uh, and now it's time for the 10 minutes suicide polemics, please. Uh, okay. okay, so I would like to start the poll mix with uh, basically the question that has already been risen, but I don't think that it was addressed fully. Uh, why did this exactly why you Okay, about so can I talk about this, about the observation, why exactly butanol? Uh, about, uh, to clarify one of my earlier points. So I didn't actually ask the reporter why they chose butanol and not ethanol. I used uh, ethanol only as a benchmark, and I agree the uh, important question is why exactly butanol? I used ethanol as a benchmark because I had a real-world example which I could apply to. But yes, I would like to hear the reporter's point of view, uh, why they chose exactly butanol. And I also want to add a question, if I am not. Okay, uh, reporter, okay. take it from here. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, I'll be with you. <clears throat> your ability to speak. Um, uh, I've, I think that's uh, butanol. Well, is uh, quite a good idea because it can be used uh, in uh, the gasoline and diesel engines with uh, the mi in the mix with gasoline and diesel and also as a single um, substance fuel. Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, if we are talking about the alcohol fuel substitutes, um, the uh, all uh, next. Uh, 
alcohols in the row are um, maybe to whiskers uh, are, and uh, the melting points uh, are becoming too high so uh, they are not um, so good uh, for use in uh, cold uh, conditions and uh, the cold areas of the planet. Um, uh, excuse me, can you please uh, specify what's wrong with the melting points? Because yes, it increases, but actually, uh, as I understood, octanol is uh, still a liquid, so that's okay. And it has a higher flash point, which makes it uh, more safe as, as a fuel. So what exactly don't you like about it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a uh, melting point. Uh, um, I mean, the melting point of the higher alcohols uh, is uh, not uh, that low to be solid at the room temperature. But uh, talking about winter conditions, they uh, can solidify an engine and uh, uh, they can start solidifying even. Um, mm, in the process of usage, which can lead to explosions, and uh, is a safety concern. Okay, uh, thank you. And another question, uh, which I would like to ask, is that uh, why haven't you, you you've had a list of numbers of physical characteristics of uh, buffenol? That's good. But uh, why d haven't you showed anywhere the enthalpy of combustion? Because I think. Uh, the, basically, it is the energy that we get from this combustion, and that's the most important point here. I haven't um, in my anywhere, table, or maybe I haven't seen was, it. Uh, in my table, there was uh, the energy density uh, of uh, comparison of gasoline, butanol, and ethanol, uh, and uh, it's uh, the energy per liter. Um, and uh, for butanol, it's higher than for ethanol. Okay. Here, can I uh, add a question myself? Uh, may I? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I want to discuss something uh, with and the problem. Since the process needs to be explained, I have one starting point, that being brains. Uh, do you think the synthesis process also includes the biomass processing and uh, which type of grains you use and fermentation processes and things like that? Uh, do you think uh, that's an important aspect of the problem which should have been uh, uh, concluded by the reporter? Thank you, opponent. I think starting material is a really big problem there. That's why I don't think that's a bad matter. Uh, for this one, um, the biomass has to be prepared uh, the bio, um, uh, they can't use the biomasser, but uh, the some kind of sugar or cellulose substrate, which has to be prepared in particular way uh, for, for the fermentation to be efficient. Um, okay, uh, thank you. And uh, another question, which is connected with the production to both opponent and the reporter. Uh, to reporter, you have shown us a chemical process of fisher-trops, and then you decided to use a canid serum reaction, as I understood. If you will show us the slides, it would be better. So uh, is it used right now? And if it's not, why did you choose uh, to use that? And to the opponent, uh, what uh, method of production of a buffanol do you think is the most efficient? And maybe you can somehow improve the method that the reporter stated. Um, actually, I have a, a question for you. What do you mean by fisher trap synthesis? Because um, it was not you there. It's uh, the making of uh, higher uh, um, hydrocarbons by of uh, methanol. And uh, the synthesis that what's used uh, in my presentation is the uh, oxo process. Oh, no name reactions there. 
uh, can you please show me the slide? So basically, by uh, you are, your method of production is basically burning a biomass. Then you, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, then you obtain uh, uh, carb carbon oxides and hydrogen. Then you uh, create methanol. It's a known process, right? Uh, yeah, uh, it's called conversion of methanol, not fissure drop synthesis. Well, as I understood, fissure drop synthesis is anything that has to relate with uh, um, carbon monoxide and hydrogen on a temp high temperature and pressure to obtain different chemical compounds. So it's a part of the no, uh, fissure drop. Uh, I think it's not really important there. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's not important. So, uh, what, what's the novelty of uh, this method? As I understood, all these reactions are described, right? Uh, the novelty uh, is only in using the biomass source uh, to produce propylene. Because uh, uh, the techniques uh, to make a butanol of propylene are known, the techniques uh, of making syngas from biomass are known, and the um, um, so you say that totally made from uh, biomass is also known, but uh, everything uh, in such a complex is uh, not used nowadays. Okay. Uh, can I my question? The discussion is over. Yeah, I would like to ask you how would you improve this method? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the reporter showed some um, reactions with a lot of steps, but in my opinion some of the steps, for example, burning the biomass. I think those are just the shifting energy from one place to another without a constant, um, let's say, uh, yield. So you lose a lot of energy in that process. A very good synthesis reaction usually has fewer steps so that the energy loss yeah. is up time. Finishing this very interesting three sides polemics. And before we come to the closing remarks by the reporter, I would like to ask the juries to type the plus in the chat if they want to have to ask the question. Now it's one minute for the reporter for his closing remarks, her closing remarks, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you again to opponent and reviewer for um, pointing out uh, what could be improved in uh, my solution and. Uh, it should be changed at all. Um, uh, however, I think that uh, the uh, that your points, your both points uh, about the yield of the reaction uh, is uh, kind of wrong because it was considered but couldn't be presented uh, in comparison table because I didn't have all the data uh, and. Um, <laughs> We don't hear you, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay. I think that, that that's so, maybe. Okay. Your time has finished. And now it's time for the questions by the jury. So the first question from Victoria Huren, please. Hi okay, guys, thank you. It was really uh, a pleasure to to listen to you. I have one short question to each of you. So first, uh, my question to uh, to the uh, reporter uh, on the step of burning biomass. Uh, you, like one of the um, uh, conditions was like one thousand degrees Celsius. Uh, it, I, I'm not a specialist, like I'm not from this field, but it, to me, it looks like very high temperature. So uh, how energy, like costly, is it, and is it even efficient to burn biomass uh, with this kind of um, condition? Yeah, burning biomass is um, uh, actually a way of uh, uh, obtaining energy. Uh, so. So the high temperature are, um, are are made by the process of uh, oxidation itself. Uh, it's so it's not that you have to supply this temperature to the system. Uh, yeah, it supplies it. itself uh, by going. Um, all right. 
uh, things. Uh, then I have a question um, to opponent, probably. Yes. So, um, unfortunately, in this uh, discussion and in, in this uh, 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 solution, we didn't really uh, pre hear almost anything about engines. And so, please, opponent, can you describe shortly, briefly, any other kind of engine other than internal combustion and how it works? Well, not exactly a different kind of engine than internal combustion because usually when you have a combustible fuel, a liquid fuel, you use internal combustion. What I'm meaning is the changes to the parameters. For example, the opening for air intake, the cylinder size difference or the number of cylinders, maybe a higher cylinder or lower cylinder engine is more efficient for alcohols. Those uh, factors, in my opinion, should be investigated. Also, although I cannot give uh, certain examples, I know that uh, um, a lot of uh, cars can undergo a procedure of uh, modification so they can accept ethanol-based uh, fuels. So those are some modifications that, in my opinion, the reporter should have at least research or mentioned. And the last question to the reviewer, you mentioned that, uh, or you, you pointed that uh, butanol has a very low caloric uh, um, uh, power, like uh, it's like low energy fuel, as I understood you. Uh, why do you uh, have is it worse than ethanol, on your opinion? Okay, basically, I've been doing this, uh, the same uh, task in my own team. So I made my research back then. And as I understood from uh, many reviews that I've uh, read, uh, the more, uh, the, the higher, the, the longer the carbon chain that we get, uh, the basically the bigger uh, the caloric values that we have, like the energy of combustion. It's so, interesting because science caloric whatever <laughs> and then ethanol i don't know how exactly okay okay thank you maybe maybe it's better also not to extrapolate information all the classes of molecules but to read about particularly butanol yeah. ethanol. Okay, thank, thank you for, for the question that. the next question coming from valeria lukashenko yeah hi everyone uh thank you for this uh, fight it was really a pleasure to uh, participate in it and watch you all special the polemics it was very interesting and i would like to ask um the question to the a reporter, if you could please show me this table where you had comparison between like the I different, like, I don't know. yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we went to this uh, a lot. Um, okay. Yeah, this one. Here I was like a bit, so I look at these numbers and they all, okay, I'm a physicist. I don't know how much difference you want to see in those numbers, but let's say uh, I never worked with engines. Yeah, I don't know how, how different it is. Uh, but the last number, which is called RVP, um, for butanol yes. is really, really low. And so what does it mean? And what does it mean for the exactly engine or usage of it um, in comparison because, to uh, gas? rate uh, labor pressure. And it uh, matters most uh, when you're talking about mixing uh, butanol with uh, the gasoline. Uh, because uh, when ethanol is mixed with gasoline, it's um, actually makes uh, RVP way more and thus the pressure in the pipelines in which gasoline is uh, trans transported becomes too high and uh, it's dangerous and butanol when mixed with gasoline makes it lower thanks to uh, its low its low value but can it be also because i can imagine that engines know about this problem with the engineers who make engines they kind of yeah create a specific design for an engine that allows this not to happen so can it be for example that the engine must not start because the pressure is too low or something like this because you switch to butanol mm, no actually because uh, the pressure is uh, made only um uh, with the air and uh, then the fuel is injected in it Okay, thanks. Okay, dear juries, if there are any other questions to the participants. So I'm waiting a few more seconds. If there are no more questions, then we will switch for, to the grading or scoring. Okay, it seems that there are no more questions.
So I'm waiting the scores or the marks in the private message.
Okay, dear participants and dear juries, we are going to continue our fight. First, we will check if everyone is present. Team Limitless, are you here? Yes, we are here. Perfect. Team VI, Ah, uh, Yes, we are here. Okay, Team Ray Imaging. Yeah, we're here. Nice. I will mute Constantine. Uh, then let's check the jury members. Dmitry Borodin, are you here? So I see that you unmuted, but unfortunately we didn't hear you. So maybe you have some microphone issues. For this, I will encourage you to reconnect to the voice channel because sometimes it really solved the problem. Uh, Yulia Mergorodska, are you here? Yulia? Okay, maybe didn't come back for now. Uh, Valeria Lukashenko. Here. Okay, Victoria Huren. Yes. Vitaly Kalanovsky. Okay, Julia Marhorotska, did you come, came back? I guess I'm back. Yes, okay. now, now we hear you. That's good. But we are still missing two juries. So, Vitaly Kavanovsky, did you hear us? And are you here? While we are waiting, I have a question to you. Does anybody understand what is exactly the logo of the Discord? Is it like hands holding the controller or is it a Hamlet? Oh, that's... Quite... I think it's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard question, actually. We should leave it for the uh, discussion, right? <laughs> But I think that like originally this card was really made by, for the gamers because mm -hmm. like it's really used a lot uh, like to communicate while you're playing, I don't know, Dota, CSGO or any other games. So maybe it's really can be uh, like, I don't know, the PS uh, controller. So Yulia answered me that she is here. That's perfect. We are waiting only for Vitaly, but I think... I can't hear anyone. Okay, that's a problem. You mean you cannot hear us? Yes, uh, like Julia typed me that she can't hear oh. us. I don't know why this happens sometime. Okay, but still we are still waiting for the Nitali. I will also write him in the telegram. Uh, okay, even still, to not lose some time, uh, let's start at least with the... Now, Julia, can you hear us? Yes, hi, now it's working. Okay, perfect. So I don't know why sometimes it can be happen with Discord, but usually, like, really just reconnecting re solves a lot of problems. Okay. I don't know why it's happening. Maybe just because we didn't pay for this server to be paid and to be better, but we don't want to do this, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so Vitaly is... Okay, can you hear us? Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm here. Perfect, so everyone is here. So let's start the challenging procedure. So the team uh, VI Chuikova will be the opponent, and the team Limitless will be the reporter. And the problems with cannot, which cannot be Challenged is the problem number two, seven, and eight. So team VI Chuikova, and obviously problem number five because it was played in the previous round. So uh, team VI Chuikova, which problem you are challenging team Limitless? Uh, we would like to challenge uh, team Limitless on the task 11, speed delivery. Okay, task 11, delivery. Team Limitless, what do you think about it? We accept this challenge. You accept the challenge. Perfect. 
So I would like to ask the teams to write down who will be the reporter, opponent, and the reviewer. And for the team Limitless, you have some time to prepare for the report, to turn on the presentation, check the sound, and vice versa. Team Limitless, I'm also asking you to, to write down who will be the reporter. Oh yeah, we're now writing. Uh, tell me when you can see my presentation. Uh, we can see your presentation. Everything is all right. Not for oh. me. I, yeah, I cannot see. <laughs> yeah, so I think you, for the Europe, there are some time a delay. And it's obvious for Germany because, right, we don't have here optical fiber. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's the all, like, constant problem and joke about Germany that uh, in the 90s, I believe, there was like one guy who was lobbying for his own company. That's why they laid copper cords and that's why internet in Germany sucks. And only yeah, now they started changing it to optic fiber. Yeah, the problem is that like internet in Germany when I lived there was really, really shitty and it was much expensive, like, okay, not much, but really ex more expensive compared to the one in France, which is like really better. Not okay. perfect, but still, this is strange. Because usually like Germany is cheaper compared to to France in a lot of stuff, but not in the internet. So. Yeah, and I don't want to even compare it all to the internet in Ukraine. Yeah, uh, sure. that was like heaven. So yeah, yeah. Like we are speaking because like the presentation is still loading, so yeah. we need to I don't know gain this time somehow. Fill in the time. <laughs> yeah, it's not that I just okay. Yay. So when it loaded, and you see it was like synchronized. So now you have ten minutes for uh, for for the presentation. But before I would ask if there was any other people who still don't see the presentation, I'm waiting a few seconds. If not, then we will start. Five, four. Okay, you can start. You have 10 minutes, please. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Stefan Alexandro, and today I'll present the, to you problem number 11, Spellivery. This is the problem statement. Uh, it's from hybrid micromotors and targeted drug delivery, advantages and disadvantages, and it asks us to get an alternative solution and apply it to other bodily fluids. This is our table of contents. First, we'll review the current liter literature for both sperm hybrid micromotors and their application in other bodily fluids, and problems with sperm micromotors, alternative approaches, and treatment strategies for certain diseases. First, an introduction to targeted drug delivery. Targeted drug delivery is a technology which is intensely researched due to its scope of delivering drugs of interest only to the affected cells of an organism. This can be very useful in the cases where the active compound is highly cytotoxic or interferes with other cellular functions. Uh, also, the sperm delivery method is an unconventional method to treat affections of the female reproductive system. The goal is to load the sperm cells with drugs, taking advantage of the unique properties of this type of cell to travel to the system. Method has only been tested in vitro currently. First, how does it work? Standard targeted drug delivery methods either use other types of cells as carriers for the treatment or small vesicles which release the drug after they uh, come in contact with an affected cell. Lutz et al. in 2012 presented multiple cell-based methods of drug delivery and their advantages. The most promising candidates are immune cells, red blood cells, and adipocytes. Immune cells are components of the immune system, and they will induce no adverse effects in the organism. 
Red blood cells are great candidates for transporting drugs to certain remote areas by the circulatory system, and adipocytes are cells which store energy and secrete factors which regulate metabolic homeostasis. Nanoreactors are cavities surrounded by a polymeric membrane in which one or more components are physically and uniformly dispersed and preserved. Uh, now we'll talk about nanoreactors. Fischer et al. in 2012 examined the drug delivery potential of nanoreactors and described the process of manufacturing the microvesicles, safely storing the drug until it reaches its target. The main structural components of the nanoreactors are double phospholipid layer, any membrane proteins present as receptors, and larger concentrations of active compound can be stored in the nanoreactors, bypassing side effects that would have been pronounced, produced by the same amount of the free drug. This is our, uh, the current literature. The application of the sperm hybrid micromotors in drug delivery has recently gained uh, the interest of researchers, opening a new door for treatment options in various pathologies. By using sperm cells as carriers for drugs and by delivering them to the target area, which sperm cells can bind design easily access, treatment in urogynecology could be revolutionized. The most noteworthy of them are the papers published in 2017 and 2020 by Shu and colleagues, where they looked into magnetic guided sperm micromotors for targeted drug delivery in ovarian cancer therapy. Another study performed by Shu et al. in 2020 analyzed the possibility of using micromotors in blood. They, they have devised a method of enabling heparin-loaded sperm cells to swim against the flow of blood to deliver the blood-thinning drug to where the blood clot is located. They were tested in an assembly which stimulates flowing blood. The paper also addresses the flow around the micromotors and demonstrates the possibility of sperm cells swimming against the stream in blood vessels. Now we will mention some problems with the micromotors. The key point and major disadvantage of this method is drug delivery is that it is highly specialized. When considering using cells or biological mechanisms to deliver treatments locally in other bodily fluids, especially internal ones, we need to carefully consider the type of cell we can use. An additional limitation of using sperm cells for targeted drug delivery is that not only in other bodily fluids, but also in their usual environment, sperms do not have an organized way to move, a fact that makes them swim in a more chaotic manner. Let us consider employing this approach in a different organ system, such as the brain, where it can be used for drug delivery to gliomas, which are highly malignant brain tumors. Here, we need to consider that we need to penetrate the blood-brain barrier, a protective layer of endothelial cells, which can prevent the passing of substances through the central nervous system. The ways through which we can circumvent this are pretty limited. Even if we find a way through the blood-brain barrier, once we get inside the cerebrum, we need to make sure that we don't disrupt the, the sensitive neurons and the links between them. Thus, a flagellated cell would be very limiting. Now we will talk about our alternative approaches. First, nanoreactors. Nanoscale vesicle systems are cavities surrounded by a polymeric membrane in which one or more compounds are physically and uniformly dispersed and preserved, as mentioned before. Polymeric nanoparticles are made of natural or synthetic polymers and therefore can be recognized by the host immune system when they reach the bloodstream or vertebrates. Nanoreactors have one or more bilayers where proteins can be included and in which enzymes can diffuse through and act on specific substrates, producing activated compounds which can act as medicine in living organisms. These molecular systems have dimensions of up to 1000 nanometers. Nanoreactors can be loaded with almost any drug or cytotoxic substance depending on requirements of the disease we are trying to treat. The phospholipid bilayer of the nanoparticles can also be modified to include special receptors or other marker proteins, depending on the use. This adaptability makes them versatile vectors for any kind of intravenous treatment. Another approach is the macrophage boosted by nanoreactors. Uh, an alternative method uh, we propose is that of a macrophage or uh, nanoreactor hybrid. Due to macrophage, macrophages having the ability to enter the intracellular space and migrate to reach most tissues, as explained by Pixel et al. Uh, in 2012. They also have an innate ability to seek out cancer cells and attack them, either through phagocytosis or by secreting cytotoxic substances. We propose to boost the macrophages' innate ability to target and destroy disease sites by artificially loading them with a much stronger substance, which can aid in their process of phagocytosis of diseased cells. This can, for instance, prove more effective in tumor destruction. When the substances enter the macrophages through endocytosis, they are contained in the phagosomes and are subjected to degradation. Only some drugs are able to escape from the phagosomes and be released. The most promising approach involves the extraction of macrophage membrane and its use as a co to, to the nanoreactors. 
presented by Xia et al. in 2020. One of the problems using the nanoreactors by themselves in solid tumor treatment is their low permeability and retention, we can, which can be overcome that by this novel approach of coupling the high cancer-seeking potential, tissue permeability, and retention of the macrophages with efficient drug release from the nanoreactors. This has the potential of significantly boosting the effect of the drugs on the sites of interest. Now, treatment strategies. First, we will talk about phototermal therapy. Phototermal therapy uses photosynthesizers, which are activated with electromagnetic radiation. This leads to heat release, which then kills the cancer cells. This method is highly used in curing cancer, mostly because of its nanoscale materials that have enhanced permeability and retention. The most recent method uses gold nanorods, or AUNR, uh, proposed by Jeremy B. Vines and colleagues. They consist of gold nanorods coated in phospholipids to make them biocompatible and not alert the immune system or cause irritation. The way they function is very similar to that of an induction heater, where a rapidly oscillating magnetic field can heat conductors, making them vibrate at very high frequencies. These particles are also called apoptotic bodies, and they could be easily included in nanoreactors and delivered to cancerous, cell, to cancerous cells. Now about chemotherapy. Due to targeted drug delivery technology, we are now able to use higher concentrations of the active substances on the affected areas without causing damage to the healthy tissues. Examples of such drugs are cyclophosphamide, uh, methotrexate, 5 fluoroacyl vinyl, uh, vinylalbin for breast cancer, and so on. The substances of chemotherapy don't change, but their concentration can be increased, since they are only administered to affected tissues. As such, their effectiveness is drastically increased, and their side effects can be minimized, which is very important in cancer therapy. Uh, about atherosclerosis, although nanomedicine originally developed for the treatment of neoplastic diseases, it has evolved significantly and expanded beyond the oncological field in the 20th century, with, uh, with great chances that nanotechnology will have a substantial role in the management of cardiovascular disease, especially atherosclerosis. At present, atherosclerosis is a common condition in which fatty deposits called atheroma plaques appear inside the layers of the arteries. Here is the atherosclerosis treatment uh, option. And here we mentioned target sublayers, nanoreactor targets, and use of the nanoreactors. You can read them for a little while. I can go back to them if it's needed. And the main types of immobil immobilized therapeutic enzymes that can be part of enzyme nanoreactors can be divided according to their action, namely enzymes involved in thrombolytic, thrombolytic therapy, hydrolytic enzymes involved in the anti-inflammatory reaction, immobilized in microcapsules, or soluble polymer carriers carrying proteins, collagenes, and so on. Together with antibodies against atherogenic lipoprotein, apoproteins for the targeted destruction of atherosclerotic deposits. And for conclusions, benefits from nanotechnology and implicitly from enzymatic nanoreactors, you can achieve a target transport of certain compounds, such as drugs, at the sites of action and the decreased effect in the accumulation in healthy tissues and occurrence of adverse effects and transport. Here are my references. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect timing. So now it's one minute for preparation for the two side polemics. So the time has passed. Dear opponent, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Yes. I am Natalia Kulpanova. I am an opponent from... If you can, to turn on the camera, it will be okay. really nice. Perfect. Um, and now you have 10 minutes for the polemics, please. Yes. 
Uh, I'm an opponent from the team Pichu Ikova. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, uh, the uh, reporter for his beautiful presentation. Uh, but then I would like to move to the slide with the uh, task tag. Uh, I guess. Uh, can you repeat that? Uh, what slide? Uh, uh, the slide with the problem text. Sure. Uh, yeah, thank okay. you. Uh, so, uh, as I understood, we need uh, to consider uh, the possibility of using the sperm hybrid micromotors in other liquids. Yes? Yes, and we have researched that possibility. Yeah. Yes, you have researched that possibility. Uh, you're saying that we cannot uh, use this in other liquids uh, due to the inability of these micromotors to move in other environments, yes? Uh, yes. Do you think it is really the most important limitation? Uh, well, no, definitely not. Not the most important limitation at all. Uh, well, I think the most important limitation is uh, uh, the immune response that sperm causes in the liquids of our body. Because even uh, when some reproductive tissues are damaged and blood has a contact with them, um, uh, and sperm antibodies are produced, and this can cause infertility. And uh, uh, when sperm cells waste in the blood or lymph or uh, just uh, tissue liquid, uh, it, it, is, it can cause uh, this immune response. Yes, yes. it's a very uh, important problem, this with the immune response. I completely agree with you that the immune response is one of the major reasons why sperm cells are hard to implement in other bodily fluids. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, you just uh, haven't mentioned this. Uh, so you decided uh, to talk about uh, perspective methods and directions in targeted drug delivery. Uh, does this really relate uh, to the problem? Yes, so uh, your point is that I didn't focus on the immune response of the sperm delivery and I focused more on the transport, right? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. yes. Uh, I focused more on the transport because although I agree that the Im immune response is a very important uh, problem, I think it can be circumvented through some uh, gene modification methods by removing some of the antigens on the surface. That's why I decided not to approach it in the presentation due to the fact that uh, some methods can indeed be used to circumvent that problem. So I thought, even though it's a very important problem, I thought that it could be solved and as such didn't list it as uh, the most important problem. Although I, I agree with you that the sperm cells unmodified do pose an immune threat to the patient. Did I answer your question? Uh... Not really, but let's move on. Uh, I have oh, more questions. Sorry, I couldn't clarify. Um, why have you chosen uh, these methods of drug delivery? Why have you presented them to us? Uh, it's just yes. a little review, or it's your own solution? Uh, well, I hope it's just a literature review. And where is the solution? Uh, it's a combination of both. So the actual uh, nanoreactors and treat uh, the nanoreactor reactor delivery method is actually uh, posed in a lot of research papers, and its combination with macrophages is also uh, discussed. Well, we came up with this method, and then later realized that it was backed up by research papers, which, in our opinion, only validates uh, an approach that can't be, uh, at least by us, uh, proven experimentally but the treatment options and their applied uh the applied treatments are uh, mostly our contribution if that's what you're asking uh okay but how does it is related uh to the problem 
just for micro motors. So you're asking why we moved away from uh, sperm cells as vectors, right? Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Just, uh, uh, to present as a message, you, you have uh, considered uh, the possibility of application of this message. It, uh, it, it is inapplicable, so that's all I, I think. Why have you presented us so many methods? that are already existing and uh, you haven't oh, yeah oh uh, can i answer yeah yeah okay so about the uh, sperm cells uh as we mentioned there was a study with their application in uh, blood fluids so uh, if we reject all the problems with uh, immune response and so on and so on, and only focus on the flagellum part and their targeted drug delivery. Even so, they can't be easily guided. They have to use external uh, magnetic uh, guidance, as an example. And even if they tested and showed that they flowed against blood, which would be really helpful, they used diluted blood. They actually used a solution that I think was half water, half blood. So. Uh, the solution was much uh, uh, further from the real life uh, than uh, the presentation might have communicated. Uh, the actual results would have shown that the flagellum isn't really effective in swimming uh, uh, against blood flow. So the, all, the whole purpose of the flagellum is to move around on its own, but if the circulatory system will still dictate the movement of the sperm cells, I, we believe that uh, the sperm cell vector is not optimal and as such modified the method to use another type of cell. Does that answer the question? Uh, yes, you just said right information that I've uh, already uh, read in oh, this. Sorry. Did, did I, I miss it? You should have stopped me if uh, you saw that I was ranting too much. Sorry. Um, uh, so, can you clarify what you mean by? Or uh, can you clarify again what do you want me to answer? Yes, I want you to answer. Uh, what is uh, your solution, and uh, why did you present it? Uh, are so many uh, techniques. Okay. Uh, Okay, so our solution, actually, uh, there weren't that many solutions. It was a step of thought process, how we g went about creating it. So we started with a nanoreactor base layer, since they have been proven in their efficiency, and then tried to combine into further cell types. The most important cell type in uh, uh, which we explored was macrophages due to their innate cancer-seeking ability. So first we tried to load the macrophages with the nanoreactors and basically uh, give them a bazooka instead of a pistol, uh, so to speak, and saw that the drug release actually lowered due to the fact that the nanoreactors would be coated in a, a liposomal membrane. And then we went and found our final solution. So our final solution is a macrophage membrane coated nanoreactor. Uh, the macrophage. Uh, the macrophage cell coating actually gives the nanoreactor the same uh, tumor-seeking ability of uh, the macrophages. And so the, uh, the answer is, this is our final solution, a macrophage membrane-coated nanoreactor after taking into account all the deficiencies of the original drug delivery method, which was the sperm cell delivery. Okay, is, and, is uh, uh, and uh, why have you chosen macrophages and uh, haven't chosen any other type of uh, immune cells that are widely used in cancer treatment and in clinical trials against cancer and so uh, Yes, certainly there are a lot of Im immune cells that could have been used, but uh, we thought that the macrophages are considered the most potent in seeking not only uh, tumor cells, but also inflammation in general. For example, for arteriosclerosis, the macrophages also uh, uh, seek that, seek inflammation. Uh, wouldn't uh, the presence of uh, the macrophages boost the formation of uh, arteriosclerosis uh, stuff? 
because uh, the involvement of macrophages in uh, the arthrosclerosis is really high. Uh, they uh, produce uh, different uh, substances uh, that cause other cells to move uh, to the place of inflammation. Wouldn't it affect uh, the disease uh, in the worst stage? Unfortunately, I won't hear this answer right now. I would like to ask you to answer the question in the suicide polemic. And now it's two minutes for the opponent to prepare for the opposition. This. So, dear opponent, your time for the preparation has passed. Now you have five minutes for the opposition. Okay, uh, let me remind you that I'm Natalia Kupanova from Team uh, So, uh, the presenter uh, gives us uh, a solid theory uh, about targeted drug delivery and especially about uh, uh, the sperm hybrid micromotors, uh, and especially uh, as, as the presenter explained why, as uh, he uh, think, uh, this method wouldn't work in vivo. Uh, however, he have mentioned many. Uh, important details about an immune response and so on. Uh, so, uh, moreover, uh, uh, the reporter uh, have presented us a lot of uh, perspective directions in uh, medicine and targeted drug delivery, uh, and uh, he based his decision on uh, the different methods, and this wasn't really related uh, to the text of the problem. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that the reporter coped with this problem, but he did an extra work that uh, isn't really applicable uh, because uh, this technique must be questioned too. Thank you. Okay. 
So now it's two minutes for the reporter to answer for the opposition. Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the opponent for their opposition. I think they brought a very good point. And I have to really explain some of the choices we made with our presentation. So, uh, sperm delivery actually was based around the fact that the sperm cells are specifically designed to swim in the female reproductive tract. They're specialized. You want to treat a disease in the female reproductive tract, you look for a cell that is designed uh, to navigate it. That, that's why we think that when applied to other bodily fluids, it's very important to keep the same spirit, not uh, looking how can we apply sperm cells to the bloodstream, but how can we find a type of cell that navigates the uh, bloodstream uh, just as well as sperm cells navigate the female reproductive tract. That's uh, how we looked at the problem. Also, the problem stated that m modifications to the method are allowed. And in our opinion, although uh, we have to agree a little that we're pushing the statement of the problem a little, uh, I think you have to agree the fact that uh, we have brought enough points uh, to help you understand why a sperm cell application in other bodily fluids can be optimized by using other types of cells. So that's all I had to say for now. And I can't wait to talk to the reviewer also about this. Okay, so now it's one minute for the reviewer to prepare for the reviewing. Okay, dear reviewer, you have four minutes for the reviewing, please. Okay, dear reviewer, we don't hear you, so I will stop your time and I will ask you to reconnect. Maybe you still have, you have the same problem, just to reconnect to the voice channel. Yeah, try to say something. No, we still don't hear you. Maybe try to go to the settings, audio and video, voice and audio, and try, try to change the input device for your microphone. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, you can hear me now? Yes, we can hear you Finally. now. You have four minutes, please. So, good day, everyone. Uh, dear, good day, dear colleagues. I am Petra Balasha from the team Reimagine, and I will uh, be the reviewer for this fight. I will start with the review of the presentation of the reporter. Uh, the reporter presented a solution to the problem of the drug delivery in other fluids, uh, not just in the female reproductive ones. Uh, the uh, reporter had a pretty decent overview of the theory and literature at the beginning of, the, of his presentation. Uh, however, it should be noted that there were uh, no numeration in the presentation. In future sub files, it should be corrected. And the uh, uh, referencing was incorrect. 
it was known to increase supplies for them and we haven't, uh, um, uh, haven't dealt with this problem. So in future supplies, I recommend to uh, put uh, correct references, not just screenshots and put over. Um, also, um, about they proposed to use uh, reactors for the uh, solution. Uh, however, it should be uh, noted, and well, it was noted by the that uh, uh, the proposed solution is not a modification for uh, what uh, of sperm motors. Uh, it is a different approach. It, solved, it um, might solve the problem, but it's not uh, a modification of the post method. In the uh, task, and it was stated clearly that it should be a modification. And that's about the presentation. About the, uh, the polemics and the opposition, uh, the uh, polemics was quite fruitful. They discussed the problem of all the uh, reference. But they Uh, sperm bus in blood. The problem of the uh, it was discussed. And sorry, where is it? Oh, and the reporter, please uh, show some respect for the and please don't interrupt her. Uh, it was twice when it, uh, you were interrupted, please, when the uh, opponent is talking. When uh, she finishes, just wait at least for a second, uh, and then start talking. Uh, it's and in the previous sub fight, uh, even the member of jury noticed that you should be well. You should con control yourself just a little bit. Don't uh, think of it as an aggression. It's just a recommendation for future sub fights because it will be noted and it won't be beneficial for you. Uh, that's about it. That's about polemics. And about the opposition, the opponent uh, raised uh, the theory uh, discussion at the beginning, so, uh, and I agree with her on that, that the theory in the beginning was quite good, as I mentioned already. And the, as I said, reporter uh, noted that the, uh, the proposed solution of the reporter is not a modification of uh, uh, sperm uh, micromotors. It's a different method. They don't use uh, sperm cells. They use macrophages, and it it still might be a viable solution. It still would work for the problem of drug delivery, but it's not the solution of the task. Okay, about this thesis, we will finish, and now you, all three of you have ten minutes for suicide polemics, please. Okay, can I start? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, thank you, Vera, for uh, your speech. Uh, first of all, let's forget about sperm hybrid micromotors and try to improve uh, the decision of the reporter. Can you move just to the slide with your decision, with your solution? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, you, you propose uh, uh, the solution that consists of microphage membrane-coated nanoreactors. Can you explain what an experiment uh, you should conduct uh, to prove your theory uh, if well, those experiments were not conducted? Okay, so such an experiment has already con been conducted, as I mentioned before, in the research paper. Uh, I think it was only tested in vitro, but these uh, nanovesicles were actually created by the disruption of a macrophage injected with such a drug, and then their permeability in infected cancer tissue was tested in vitro on a um, or culture baits. And then they tested how many uh, migrated and were absorbed with the drug delivery in the tumor cell. So, 
Also, uh, sorry, uh, first of all, sorry if it came off as interrupting. I just really wish we had more time to discuss and just really love discussing the problems with everyone else. So sorry if it I came off as rude. Okay, now we have quite plenty of time for this, so. Okay, so no I uh, this experiment what has been already, already conducted. So what is in you in your solution? You just uh, uh, want to replicate this in vivo. Why uh, you should test this in vivo? So uh, if it was tested only in vitro. Uh, the sperm hybrid micromotors, from what I know, were mostly tested in vitro also. The applications for this exact problem, I haven't been tested in vivo, but nanoreactors by themselves have been tested in vivo in other cases. Uh, so this specific method has not been tested in vivo, but a very similar uh, method which originated this method has been. Okay. Um, I think the main limitation of this method is the membrane of macrophages because it contains uh, different receptors that can be recognized by the immune system, so it may not work. Well, if you use recipient cells, the immune response can be mitigated. Uh, well, uh, okay, uh, the viewer want to say something? Oh, or... uh, yeah, you were... Sorry. Uh, reporter, you were talking that the immune system can be mitigated. Which methods do you propose to use with macrophages in order to mitigate the immune system? Well, by using uh, micro, uh, first of all, you should use um, the antigens that are biocompatible with the recipient. So this method should be catered to each patient individually by taking a sample of of the patient's macrophages and then using that as a reference for antigen creation for the nanoreactors. Mm -hmm. And opponent, could, do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, I want to know why you want to use the membrane of macrophages. What molecules on this membrane uh, do you like to react somehow with this? Uh, yes, uh, I don't have the exact name for those receptors, but there are some specific receptors on macrophages which have the ability to seek cancer cells and bind to them. They are attracted to uh, uh, proteins that uh, the cancer cells secrete uh, to uh, induce uh, blood, uh, blood vessel growth and uh, glycolysis and stuff like that. So the macrophage has some receptors that makes it react to cancer cells and inflammation. Isn't it more logical to use the membranes of lymphocytes, especially T lymphocytes, uh, that can also recognize some mistakes? And not only membrane, but just a strange thing uh, that you just want to use membranes and not uh, the intrinsic compounds that are in the cells. So uh, no oh. signaling pathway can be uh, triggered. So what is uh, the use? Okay, so about the fact that membrane coated, it's not exactly coating because once you coat uh, the nanoreactor with the membrane the two membranes will, will actually fuse over time and create a sort of hybrid between the nano and the macrophage with interrelations of the macrophage so this method uh, gives us a nanoreactor with macrophage mem membrane receptor am i clear uh, so you mean that so the fusion uh, may uh, begin uh, with this nanoreactor and as a cell? Well, due to this method, um, due to this method, we can have both properties of both macrophages and nanoreactors. That being specific uh, targ uh, targeting and better permeability, because macrophages also have the property of high. Uh, intercellular permeability. Uh, this is why we also didn't use lymphocytes, because 
they have uh, intercellular permeability, but it's lower than that of macrophages. Well, uh, will it have uh, uh, increased tissue permeability if it hasn't any, uh, on this picture, it hasn't any nucleus, for example, uh, and the nucleus is very important for immune uh, system cells uh, movements, tissues, uh, because it limits uh, the size of the whole they go into yeah, well, uh, yes, nanoreactors already have a very small size and uh, removing the nucleus of the macrophage is part of the process due to the fact that we have to limit the size of the nanoreactors to be as small as possible. Nanoreactors already have great uh, tissue permeability. Uh, they have been tested in vitro and in vivo, but uh, in vitro applications of this uh, macrophage uh, membrane hybrid with nanoreactors has been shown to increase the permeability of nanoreactors. But not only the size of the nucleus is important, but uh, their, uh, its connection with the membrane through the cytoskeleton. Uh, it's like a signal, more signaling pathways and just the physics. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we have only two minutes. Uh, if uh, maybe you want to add something. I have uh, to respond quickly to this point. Uh, the actual uh, migration uh, doesn't uh, really matter in this context because the cytoskeleton and the pseudopod emission done by the nucleus combined with the cytoskeleton of the macrophage isn't really needed for a site this small. And the main mechanism is actually the receptors of the nanoreactors. Yeah, please continue. Sorry, I don't want to eat that. Uh, okay. So, uh, my, I will ask a question, uh, if you're not against it. Uh, my question is, uh, how the medicine will react on these, like, nanoreactors? Are there any problems with the exact medicine we put inside them? Uh, I have also presented some uh, type cytotoxic uh, medicine, if that's what you're worried about. Uh, you worry about the integrity of the nanoreactors. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, their integrity would not be affected. They have been tested and show great stability in holding uh, both hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, medicine. Okay, that's good. Uh, does the opponent has anything to maybe have some questions which are close to this one? About the medicines or whatever. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the next question. Oh. So, I don't think. Okay, then I think it's good to finish our discussion. Done. Oh, thank you for the discussion. It was really fun. Yeah, it was really interesting yeah, to hear this especially for me. Uh, so uh, now before we will come to the reporter to do the closing remarks, I'm asking the jury members to type pluses in order if they have some questions, and then I will give, some, give them time to ask these questions. And now, dear reporter, you have one minute for the closing remarks, please. Okay, so thank you both to the opponent and the reviewer for the great conversation. Uh, as a closing remark, I believe we have stated the reasons why we chose the path we chose and why we strayed away for, from a sperm cell vector and actually moved to a, another type of cell. I think the problem statement allows for it as it mentions uh, to search for the problems and the search for the modifications to circumvent those problems. And in our opinion, this method circumvents most of the problems with uh, sperm cell hybrid micromotors uh, due to the fact that the flagellum is not actually that important in sperm hybrid micro cell, uh, micromotors. Um, and yeah, thank you. That's all I had to add. Thank you both to the reviewer and the opponent. I hope the jury will be satisfied with their questions. Thank you also. And the first question from the jury is coming from Vitaly Kavanovsky, please. Okay, thank you. I have two questions, for one for the reporter and one for the opponent. So, reporter, 
Uh, have you considered other bodily fluids besides blood, for example, lymph or cerebrospinal fluid? And if not, why not? Yes, we have considered them in the uh, first stages of the problem. But for, uh, for the lymph, for example, uh, it's almost the same as blood, although it circulates at a lower speed. Uh, the, uh, sorry. Uh, nanoreactors can actually reach the lymph quite easily due to the fact that they can permeate the intercellular spaces, and we believe that sperm cells would be uh, would reach them harder since the diameter of the vessels is smaller. But as a short uh, answer, yes, we have uh, considered other bodily fluids. Thank you, and opponent, uh, could you please briefly just name what are the major drawbacks, maybe the main flaws in this macrophage approach of the reporter? Uh, well, I haven't even clarified why he decided to use this approach. This is useless, actually. Thank you. Thank you also for the question. So the next question is from Yulia Morgorodska, please. Um, yeah, so one part uh, of the drug delivery process is delivering the drug. Another second part is actually releasing it. Uh, do you have an idea how your system would be releasing the drug that is trapped inside of this macrophage? Well, as I mentioned, uh, there was a problem previously by loading nanoreactors directly into the macrophage, and it would actually have problems releasing the drug. That's why we strayed from it and actually only used the membrane from the macrophage and then hybridized it with the nanoreactor membrane. So the actual drug delivery for a, a macrophage nanoreactor hybrid is uh, that of nanoreactors being in the cytotope or... So, so your you know. drug, sorry, your drug is inside of the membrane. Well, so let's say your drug is what your drug is small molecule, or let's say, well, maybe something bigger. So it is not trapped in, inside of the nanoreactor, but on the surface. Uh, yeah, no, it is trapped inside of the nanoreactor, and then uh, due to the receptors on the membrane, the cell takes in the drug, and uh, yeah, and then the drug is directly delivered to the cell or to the sites of uh, injury or other affections, depending on the cells. So the, and the vesicle will release drug automatically in the correct environment. Okay. Thank you for the question. Next one is from Victoria Huren. Uh, hi guys, I also have one question for each person, so please be short. First question to the uh, reporter. Uh, I didn't really get from your presentation. Uh, it looked to me like you are interchangeably using uh, words uh, nanoreactors and liposomal whatsoever. So please explain me the difference between nanoreactors and liposomes. And also you mentioned that nanoreactors are covered in polymeric membrane. So which polymer is that? Or did you mean lipid? What was that? Uh, sorry, that was a confusion on my part of the polymeric membrane. It's actually a phospholipid bilayer similar to cell membranes. And as for liposomes and nanoreactors, I think uh, the main uh, similarity between the two is that they're both vesicles. And I don't think that we can actually differentiate if these are liposomes or nanore nanoreactors. is just another name for uh, drug-loaded liposomes, as far as I know. I might be wrong. Thank you. Uh, then I have a question to the uh, opponent. You mentioned, you, you proposed uh, during the um, uh, discussion that, uh, or you asked the uh, reporter why didn't they, for example, try to use uh, adipocyte uh, uh, cell wall membrane. Uh, how do you think blood flow, like immune cells would react on adipocytes in blood flow? Don't you think it can cause maybe some like drawbacks, some reactions? Now, did you said I have proposed a deposite cell membrane. Yeah, you are. Uh, uh, I have proposed that. I got you wrong then. Uh, yes, I have proposed other uh, immune cells uh, modifications. Okay, all right. Thank you then. Sorry for that. And also, then the last question to the uh, reviewer 
since we didn't really hear it in the uh, presentation, it was not really explained. Could you please explain us briefly how actual uh, uh, sperm micro robots release uh, their drug into the target cells? Because I don't know this part and it's interesting to me. Okay, so the one approach I am familiar with is that uh, when the sperm bots actually reach the, their target, uh, the target is heated or it's already hotter than the surroundings. So it can be heated via some uh, like, uh, electromagnetic waves. And the uh, sperm bot has this uh, specific coating that uh, degrades when the temperature is raised. So uh, when it uh, comes to this region, the target region with higher temperature, it uh, degrades because of the temperature. And then the, all the uh, medicine drugs are released into the target. So does it mean that first you need to put something you can heat up in your target? So for example, you, can, you should put some metal into tumor and then using waves heat it up or what? That's also can be uh, a thing. Uh, there's um, an approach when you have uh, uh, non-moving uh, uh, sperm cells, they, they are inactive in movement, and you attach uh, metallic springs to them, and then you use magnetic field uh, to, um, uh, to glide them through the fluid. And then this metallic spring, uh, again, can be heated by electromagnetic waves. All right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And the last question from Valeria Lukashenko. Hi, yeah, I'm glad actually that Yulia just raised uh, this question about uh, how it actually works because I also got very lost. So I'm very sorry for, for my ignorant question, that probably. But you just said you can put, reviewer just said you can put like a metallic ring onto this sperm thing. And I also saw that at some point there was some idea, at least the reporter mentioned something with gold and yada, yada, yada. So my question is, maybe some of you, I really don't care who, but someone you can answer to me or tell me, is it actually safe to leave those mag like metal pieces inside your body? Because that would be something that I would be very concerned if it happens. Yeah, reporter, please, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of the reasons why we also moved away. Uh, we also mentioned that they need some guiding, and the only guidance system we have found yet is that of magnetic particles. And that's also a problem because you can't just inject those magnetic particles in the bloodstream and the hope for them to go away. Because as far as I know, they can't be filtered out by the kidneys or any other or methods, so maybe an extra filtration step uh, is needed, and then those magnetic particles could stick together and create embolisms in the blood flow, so that's that could create... Choose. That's why we chose an approach which is easier to guide or guide it chemically. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, that's very clear. Thank you. Mm. I know that your name is Victoria. I know it very well. So now it's time for the for the putting the putting the marks from the jury in my private messages. And before this, I want to announce that the second fight will start slightly uh, shifted. It won't be at 1 p.m. CT. It will be at 1:15 to really have a more or less normal time for break. Yes. So I'm waiting for the marks. Okay, so uh, the term marks.
They are quite interesting and it will be really interesting to hear the comments from the juries because some marks are like the, the difference between marks are like super big, at least for me. So the marks for the reporter, two, three, nine, seven, seven, five. The marks for the opposition, four, seven, eight, six, six, six. And the marks for the review, six, seven, eight, eight, five, seven. So I'm really want to hear the comments, especially for the really, for the really important. Please, Victoria. Please, um, Victoria. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Julia, um, you, I can. You, you can start if you want. Yes, no problem. Yes. Yeah, I put uh, quite high marks uh, as I really enjoyed this. Uh, I think that was a fight I. Uh, enjoyed the most out of all of the topics while well, putting aside that I do work in drug delivery and I can appreciate the complexity of some of the problems. Um, so my, uh, my score varied a lot through this presentation, I think, uh, especially for the reporter, because it started pretty low. And as he continued explaining um, his point of view, I kind of appreciated they did a lot of research. It was not really presented in the presentation, so that's a pity. But I think he did uh, over kind of address a lot of points. So of course, I also take into account that you're just students and this topic is inherently complex and a lot of things need to be taken into account. And um, like people cannot solve drug delivery in a big pharma, so we don't expect you to do that. Um, and as for the other uh, opponent, I also appreciated that just because of the questions that she asked, he was able to um, to address this topic way more than he did in his initial presentation, even though he doesn't answer exactly what the question was asking for, because I think it is pretty useless to talk about, um, yes, sperm delivery in, um, in blood or any other fluids. If it doesn't work, you shouldn't be focusing on things that doesn't work. Um, yeah, the, the only thing that uh, I found that the opponent was kind of, um, harsh and un, um, unacceptant of the other solution. So that's why I dropped the score a bit. And um, yeah, a reviewer um, just wasn't so bad as well. So that's my comments to my notes. Okay, Victoria. Yeah, um, I would like to, um, also to comment my marks. They were pretty low. So first of all, guys, thank you for presentation. It was, uh, it's like absolutely off the uh, task of the problem. And uh, it even like, okay, if you think that this method is not approachable or like it's not really, it could not be really used, then you should clearly explain it in your presentation, which was not done. And why so in the end of your presentation i had an impression that you just completely missed the point of of the task and only in the discussion uh you um motivated enough your solution at least somehow and also you spent only one or two slides on the actual point like actual like hero of this task like those uh, uh micro robots and i think it's very not enough and you mentioned, for example, that one of the drawbacks is that they were very specific in delivering, so it would be very hard to pick the uh, correct target, as I got from your presentation. But actually, specificity is what we are lacking in drug delivery, like some, like in many ways, in many many fields. Uh, so it was very like off-putting for me. So you had so much of irrelevant information about different disease, which didn't really lead then to expansion of your concept. You just told us about chemotherapy, chemotherapy, about atherosclerosis and other diseases. And you mentioned substances that you would like to put in your nano reactors only in the end, although it was also important part of the task. And it was very like um, messy, I would say overall, like your presentation was quite messy overall, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and also I didn't get why are they Nano reactors. What is there from reactor? And also, in the end, you like your extraction of membranes from mi microphages, like so complex process. In the end, it's 
you 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 like leave out nucleus you leave out as opponent pointed out uh cytoskeleton which is important for them to move to grab their target so in the end you're left only with membranes so what is it why is it better than just create liposomes put on them specific like antibodies which will target uh, right cells in the body and it would be way cheaper and you don't have to expect microphages from patients so i don't know it was for me this solution was very wrong uh, to be honest and i didn't get it at all um yeah i would also like i gave very low mark to the opponent because um Sometimes also during the discussion, guys, I had an opinion uh, or impression that you don't really understand what you are talking about, and it was a bit like vague. But also in the end, opponent just said, like her closing remark was that the solution was useless. Um, that was very um, not friendly, I would say. And you should, even if you think that solution is like uh, not relevant, don't say it's useless uh it was bad yeah and reviewer uh you also had nice points you um like explained uh pros and cons uh, of uh both reviewer and opponent or uh, and presenter but uh you were very um not active during the polemic so we didn't really hear you we didn't understand like where would you like to add your point where would you like to lead this discussion so that's why also a low mark Thank you for your commentary. I tried to, well, I explain myself quickly that I tried to not to interrupt the discussion of the reporter and opponent. So it looked like I didn't participate at all. But thank you for your commentary. I'll take it into account. Can I also say a few words? Because <laughs> I kind of. Sure, sure. sure. And I will hear the uh, words from Vitaly Kalonovsky because he will also put like quite low marks because uh, I, I put kind of like in, in middle marks let's say <laughs> in most cases so i guess it's also a good uh, spectrum that you see a high a low and like a middle one so for me for example uh, of course yeah i understand the point of missing let's say a bit the question of the task and i think it could be saved um, very easy by just in your presentation just you know Saying at some point, okay, this thing with uh, the promoters is just very bad. You know, this metal core, yadi yadi. We really don't think it's a good thing. So instead of just you know adding something to it, we really want to start from scratch. We want to create a new carrier that will be way better. Blah blah blah. So there will be some you know link that you just think that just modification is not enough. So why to spend time on that if we know it's that it has these problems that are way bigger than its advantages. So I would save it like that. And, but other than that, I was, I, I kind of agree with many of Victoria's points. So she raised these issues with a lot of information and presentation was a bit irrelevant and like not maybe highlighting the necessary things, which I think is really important. And, but still for me, somehow, I mean, of course, I'm not an expert. I was still very impressed with just the amount of research that went into it. So I, I know that it, it, a lot of things popped out in discussion rather than in presentation. That's a problem, but still they popped out and I could see them and that really impressed me. So that this mark be became kind of middle because, you know, I know the problems, I know there are good things and I kind of <laughs> put it somewhere in between. And there's also one thing that I wanted to point for the opponent because in the first discussion, I think at some point opponent said something that reporter uh, asked her whether she was satisfied with the answer and the opponent said not really and then she still switched to another topic and i think this is somehow yeah you if you don't understand the answer keep asking like i mean this is also the part of scientific process you need to explain your answer it's not just uh, if i don't understand uh, fine but you know you you need to try to maybe push a bit there if you really do not understand and think it's a value point to raise. That's the only comment I wanted to add. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And Vitaly, can you also comment on your point, please? Yeah, of course. I'll comment only on the mark to the reporter because the other two marks were medium, I'd say. Uh, generally, I'll join whatever the uh, Victoria said already. 
and the task had not been solved. Uh, the uh, general speech of the reporter was maybe the literature review, but this review was very shallow. And the, all the um, keynotes, sort of key messages of the reporter showed this poor scientific background. Uh, I would like to contradict with Yulia that um, there was a very big work I mean, no to worries. be done I'm not this an expert, <laughs> so yeah, I would know it. <laughs> I, I am an expert, and I am telling you that uh, this task is far from science. Whatever keynote we heard about the macrophages, about the sperm cells, it's mm, to say it's a nonsense. I would like to... Mm, our inventions to be coupled with real world science. And I would like to maybe wish all of the participants, all the reporters, to make a better homework, to prepare better for the tasks. Thank you. Thank you. And so I think we can finish with this. And I'm inviting everyone in uh, for the fight number four at 1.15 CET PM. So have a nice break and see you soon. I would like to say, guys, if any of you have any questions to me, my marks or my remarks, you could ask me, you can write me in the chat. I'm open to this. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I would just comment that I judged more the discussions and the presentation itself. That's probably why my marks are so high. <laughs> yeah, well. That's um, how it felt to me. <laughs> but now we have all time to relax a bit, maybe um, have a breath of fresh air and also uh, enjoy your food, your lunch, guys. <laughs> it's also very Enjoy your coffee. See you.